All right, well, here we are, chilling with Larry Megan on a Thursday night. Uh, very, very exciting tonight. Uh, been looking forward to having uh, our special guest tonight, Elliot Smith, uh, really for a while here. You know, it's been tough, you know, coordinating and syncing up our schedules because this guy is on Shop NBC night and day all the time. So to get a, a hole in the schedule like this where we can pick up Elliot Smith, I'm really uh, glad to have him. You know, actually, we're going to get into this. Don't, don't show Elliot yet, okay? <laughs> But I had to invite him to be on my show to get him up here to my place, okay? Because uh, this is a busy guy. Anyway, um, <clears throat> a few things before we get into the meat of the show. A very exciting show tonight for a lot of reasons. But um, we've got, we're going to do a special Oscars uh, dish tonight. I've got my good friend out in Los Angeles, Candace Mayron. She's going to uh, give us her little take on what's coming up this Sunday night on the Oscars. She's a former columnist for the LA Times and uh, that's going to be fun to have Candace in the show. Also in the classic film zone we're going to take a look at an Oscar nominated picture from 1934 The Thin Man and a lot to talk about with that we're going to have our Acorn TV correspondent in Manhattan New York Barbara Rosine is going to bring that to us so that's going to be uh, something to look forward to and listen if you're new to Acorn TV and you have watching us now for the first time the first thing I ask you to do is click on the Facebook button over on the right-hand side of your uh, picture there, and um, just to the side of the player, and like our Facebook page. That's our Facebook fan page. You know, click like and help us spread the word. Click on the Twitter button as well. That's that little birdie over there. And uh, follow us on Twitter. We put out show alerts, let you know who our guest is going to be, what we're going to talk about, and uh, we put out those alerts on uh, Twitter. And then finally, you'll notice in the bottom right-hand corner of the uh player you're going to see a little share button uh, you know we ask you to please you know click on that little share button and you know share it to your facebook uh go ahead and uh, help us spread the word that way we really appreciate that now one more thing tonight since you know we are you know kind of looking at the oscars and the movies and the old movies with the thin man and you know elliot's kind of up on the new movies i'm kind of up on the old ones but uh we thought we'd give away a pair of movie tickets so uh tonight you know, I actually, at the last minute, Ronnie, I actually threw together a, a quick graphic. You know, I'm not real good at graphics out there, guys, but I popped something together with the tickets. Did you find that in the system, Ronnie? Yeah. I know we didn't have too much time to coordinate. There it is. Thanks, Ronnie. We're going to give away a pair of uh, AMC Silver Experience uh, tickets. Uh, so what you have to do for that is uh, every time we make a call out, you know, you can send it. You have five minutes to send an email to contact at Acorn TV. And you're going to get in the drawing, okay? And you're going to have to put the secret word. Now, we didn't make a graphic for the secret word. We were running short on time. So you got to use your ears because I'm going to say it, okay? The secret word for tonight is crystal. I made that up on the fly. C-R-Y-S-T-A-L. Does anybody know why the secret word would be crystal tonight? Well, at the Oscars, they're making a really big deal about the fact that Billy Crystal is going to be coming back to host, I think, is. I think it's his ninth or something like that. He's only the second to Bob Hope uh, of all time. But uh, Billy Crystal is going to be hosting the Oscars again this year. So we're going to make our secret word. You put that in the subject line. Put Crystal in the subject line. Send an email to contact at Acorn TV right now. You'll get in the drawing for the free tickets uh, for AMC movie theaters. And in the body of the email, give us your name, city, and state. We don't need your phone number. We don't need your address. Just name, city, and state. And uh, a little later in the show, we'll probably do another call out for that. Okay, a lot on the uh, table here tonight for Chilling with Larry Megan, and uh, I think it's probably uh, about that time that we're going to bring in our guest, and I'll tell you a little bit uh, what I know about Elliot. I first met Elliot probably about five years ago, I want to say, uh, at Shop NBC, and uh, Elliot Smith is like an electronics guru, uh, Ronnie. You know, I can't hear any playback in the studio, Ronnie. Do we have any? Okay, because I've got nothing. Anyway, I met Elliot about five years ago at Shop NBC, and um, he's a, like I said, he's selling computers, TVs, uh, GPS systems, everything there. And you always want to be friends with the guy who knows electronics. But what I didn't know is what a great sense of humor this guy has, and we always had a lot of fun joking around in the green room. Elliot, welcome to Chilling with Larry Megan. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, thanks nice. for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
Can you hear the music? Uh, it's a great choice. It takes me back. You know what it is, right? Billy Joel. Yeah. Uh, give New me York a, State of Mind. Very nicely course, done. Yeah. Give me a little volume, Ronnie, in the studio. No, this is good. Well, you know, um, our girl Mallory, she did a, a pre-interview with you, and yeah. she put on the notes uh, asking you about some of your favorites, and you said Billy Joel. Growing up, loved Billy Joel. He was from uh, Oyster Bay, Long Island. I grew up across the sound from him. I mean, not at the same time, obviously, but his music was real popular uh, back in the tri-state area where I grew up, and idolized him, did a lot of singing when I was a little kid, and this was the stuff I used to love to sing to. Well, you know... Um, so I go online and I'm figuring, you know, I like to play a song to introduce my guest, something that you can connect with. And uh, I got to tell you something. It's not that easy to pick one Billy Joel song. No, they're all good. <laughs> you know, I enjoy his whole collection. I'm telling you, you there's like 20. That Remember I the movie Office Space? In, in the movie Office Space, they say uh, there's a guy there um, who's uh, named Michael Bolton. And he hates it because he hates Michael Bolton. Oh, God. And the guys who are evaluating for his, him for his job say, oh, you must love Michael Bolton. What's your favorite song? And he just says, I enjoy his entire collection. <laughs> <laughs> so you like He's that so with sick. Billy Joel? No, I actually enjoy Billy Joel. Yeah. yeah, well, who doesn't? I mean, the guy is, you know, talent in his little toes. I mean, he's, yeah, he's got amazing. talent to his bones. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm looking at over the list. I'm trying to pick a song that, you know, we're going to bring you in. And, and uh, thank you for giving us that, Ronnie. Yeah, great choice. But... Um, I figured, you know, I know you went to Princeton. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not too sure about your New York roots, but New Jersey, Princeton. I even thought about moving to Princeton. I love it there so much. Pretty area. Mm -hmm. I love it. I just didn't have the guts because there would have been about a 50-mile commute to Brooklyn every day. Yeah. Plenty of college girls, though. <laughs> 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 so I, knew you, that going I, for I, I knew you would go there, man. Unbelievable. <laughs> Why not start early, right? <laughs> yeah. But it's such a nice area, man. You don't feel like you're in the hustle and bustle of Manhattan. You know, it's well, really on the campus, for people who've never been there, it's all Gothic architecture. So it's you're awesome. just around these beautiful Gothic arches and buildings and a uh, great place to spend four years from what I remember. Yeah. In 2010, when I st first started uh, chilling with Larry Megan and we started getting it going, I had a... Um, a business associate who lived in New Hope, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what I would do for our meetings, I would usually meet her after work. And instead of having her drive all the way to Manhattan or me all the way to New Hope, I would, we would meet in Princeton. Okay. And whether it was Saturdays or after work in the evenings, whatever. And uh, that was how I got turned on to Princeton. And I just loved it. And before I ended up moving to Minneapolis, I thought, well, maybe I'll stay in New York. You know, maybe I won't move here. And it just it was 29 trips in one year it was too much too but much, yeah. yeah but i went down there and i was looking around and i even had a place all picked out and at the last minute i just thought man i don't know it's it's so nice here but every day going over the outer bridge crossing going over the verrazano into brooklyn every day I, man i i would get tired of that in the neck yeah after college i moved right into manhattan and that was that was great well let's talk yeah. about that because you know i mean i lived in new york now for almost 7 years before i came out here and I mean, don't get me wrong, I love New York, okay? Um, people think I'm from New York. I'm from L.A., but I spent seven years there. But I got to tell you, man, I, I don't miss the city at all. Really? Not at all, man, uh, no. I mean, I guess if you spend enough time there, you have enough of it. To me, it's little things, not having to drive anywhere, hailing a cab or getting on the subway. You like that? I love it, yeah. Now, what do you want to drive around for? Oh, man. Yeah, especially if you go out, you meet a few friends, you have a couple of drinks. Okay, you lived in Manhattan. Were you in a walk-up? No, I was in a doorman, but well, oh, because you know, you're five he's, years. He's, he's a rich guy. So. No, no. Well, when I, <laughs> all right. So uh, the first apartment I was in was a walk up. It was two bedroom. We split four ways. Well, that's so it was uh, me. See, a lot of that goes on in New York. Well, Sharing. it was right out of college, right? So it was me, my buddy Ben, Bill, and Scott, right? Okay. And so it was the four of us in a two bedroom. It was great because you come home from work at the end of the day, and the party was there. You were there with all your best friends. And so we just hang out at the apartment. It was tight. It was cramped. We had no money. I remember I got in a fight with Bill because uh, Bill was so good at budgeting his money or cheap, as we might say. I got in a fight with him. I said, you never buy any toilet paper. It's your turn to buy toilet paper. He said, what the heck do I have to buy toilet paper for? There's toilet paper at work. I never use it here. <laughs> <laughs> so that, you know, that's how tight the budget was, living in Manhattan right out of college. That sounds like a New York yeah. story right yeah. there. And then the funny thing is even when I graduated law school and was working as a lawyer, I still had to... Uh, have a roommate just because of how expensive it can be living in the city. Yeah. Well, you know, even you say college kids, co you know, I knew lots of adults that were sharing apartments. It's kind of a very natural thing there. I can, unless you can afford like a nice doorman building on Park Avenue or whatever, oh, yeah. wherever Someday, it may right? to be. <laughs> but, um, okay, so what part of Manhattan were you in? Uh, so I started 23rd and Lex, moved to okay. 26th, yeah, okay. moved to 31st and 3rd, moved to 30. 
first between Lex and third. So, so you're always on the there. east side. Yeah, always on the east side, kind of between Gramercy and Murray Hill, yep. that area. Okay. Um, and then when I graduated law school, the law firm I worked for was in the Chrysler building. Okay. So I had I just that. a little 10, 11 block walk to work every morning. Isn't that where Bobby Vans is? I, uh, the steakhouse. It's, it's near there. Yeah. I think it's in the Chrysler building. It, no? I don't know if it, I, it's not in the Chrysler It's on building. that block. It's on that block. It's on yeah. that block, yeah. Just down the block on uh, 42nd. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, so you mentioned you went to law school. Now, I mean, I can certainly understand, but to a lot of people, maybe a lot of people can't understand. Law school to TVs and TV shop. electronics and all yeah. that kind of stuff. What happened there? Uh, well, all right, quick question. Uh, top of your head, name all the happy lawyers you know. <laughs> That's a good question. Trick question, right? That's a very um, good question. Well, no, I was on QVC starting in 1997, 98. So I started there. I was doing QVC UK, QVC Germany, and QVC in, in the United States uh, selling computers. Okay. And I loved it. And then when I graduated law school, I sort of mistakenly thought, oh, I got to get a, you know, a real job because I didn't know how good I had it. Um, and it took me a year to figure out I was miserable. And so a friend of mine who was a host at QVC helped me get a job uh, down in Tennessee at a network called Shop at Home. Uh, they made me a host there. I was also a singer at the time, so I was recording an album. So I moved down with a friend of mine, quit law, put everything I owned the back of his Acura. We drove down there. Uh, it was funny because it was a stick shift car, and I'd never driven stick before at that time. So we got halfway, and he's like, I can't drive anymore. you got to drive. So he taught me how to drive stick in Waffle House parking lot. We got back on the highway, and we just went. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Once you get it up to you know fifth gear or whatever it was, you're okay. Fine. Just don't yeah. slow down. Yeah. But, and then, well, it's funny because he fell asleep, and then it was time for us to get off the highway and to wake him up. I said, I don't know what to do. <laughs> so just press the clutch. <laughs> but uh, do so, they still have? I mean, do they still manufacture you know manual drives anymore? Yeah, of course. Okay. I mean, I, I would imagine so. Well, I, I think drove with some of the nice sports cars. cars. Yeah. yeah, but that was forty years ago. But so I got down there. I I uh, I hosted on this small network. I was making nothing for money. I was recording an album with my buddy and. It was the time of my life, the best five years of my life living in Nashville. Now, you keep talking about you were a singer, you were recording. Now, you know, I can't sing a note, okay? If I could sing, mm -hmm. I, I love watching these singing competitions like The Voice, yeah. American Idol, because I can't sing. I love singers. If I could sing, I would never work again. Now, you, you, what, you just quit singing or what? You had a gift for it or what? Well, I loved singing. It turns out the music we wrote was terrible. So, you know, that's a problem. But you can't just sing other people's songs. I like can they... sing other people's songs, but you can only make such a, you know, so much of a career out of that. You know, we used to do covers. And so, stuff did like you that. play guitar too and all that? I uh, played a little bit guitar, played a little piano. Do you still own a, an acoustic guitar? I have a couple guitars. Yeah, my mom uh, owned a music store, so the instrument side of things was. Well, you can sing on the right now if you want. I I could do that. We'll have to see. Okay. After well, I finish my coffee. Okay, maybe, and I'm gonna have some of my gonna, coffee. Yeah, too, that's a good while idea. You're talking about mm -hmm. it, but. You know, the thing is, Elliot, I, about, uh, was it two weeks ago, my guest here was Connie Kunkel. Oh, she's fantastic, yeah. Yeah, and of course, she sang on Broadway. And, mm -hmm. you know, some singers, uh, you know, you say, hey, we want to sing for us or whatever. Can you sing for me or, you know, that kind of thing. I had a girlfriend in New York that was a singer. But, I mean, to get her to sing, oh, I have to warm up. I'm not ready. I got to practice. Blah, 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 blah. So you get tired of asking. Connie, if you say, hey, Connie, I heard you're a singer, she'll just drop whatever she's doing. She'll sing in the middle of the street. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in the hallway. So will crazy people. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway so connie you know was coming on the show and she said larry i'll i'll sing on your show and i, I said well we're not she was fantastic i said we're not really set up for it we don't have a sound stage <clears throat> she said i'll just sing in the chair right in the mic yeah i said well you know okay and it turned out ronnie did the mixing on the audio and everything and she sent us the tracks and we put a mic stand here she wanted to stand up yeah. but uh man it sounded really good i don't know if you happen to she sang yeah I, I heard it she was great I, I was kind of playing it up that I'm going to twist your arm to sing, but if you know Connie, you don't have to do You don't it. have to twist her arm. You don't have to twist her arm. See, I'm a karaoke superstar. That's for me. If you want to come to the karaoke bar I will. tonight, I would we love can to. make that happen. And what kind, of, when you, what kind of music do you pick when you do it? Not the old dead stuff like I like. No. no. <laughs> I like the Sinatras and the Night King Cole. Yeah, I, like. I, I mean, I'll sing some Billy Joel. Okay. Um, that's, always, that's always a popular choice, but sort of whatever catches my eye in the book, you know, when you flip it open. Okay. Depends how many... Uh, you know, Diet Cokes I've had that night. I got you. You know. Yeah, okay. I'm but yeah, I, I mean, uh, I love singing and I love doing it. The one thing you know is when you're on TV a lot um, and all over the calendar, you know, night, mm -hmm. morning, afternoon, uh, it takes a toll on you physically. And hosting a shop at home over that period of time, just being on the air a lot and then coming to Shop NBC and being on constantly, uh, the voice... You know, it starts to go. Well, you know, also you're on your feet all the time. When you guys <laughs> mm -hmm. you do your show, um, you know, and I actually would like to stand. Uh, you it's know, hard to from, tell when I'm on my feet. That's funny, but I'm bummed. <laughs> you know, but um, 
I know everyone likes to kid you, you know, uh, about your height. But the thing I notice about you is that you're very, you know, uh, comfortable in your own skin with that. And you even like to be self-deprecating. I see you're always making fun of yourself. And this that's, isn't the part of the show where you ask me to take my clothes off. No, no, okay. no. We don't, we don't do that here. <laughs> that's good. We try to keep it clean on Acorn. <laughs> okay. But um, uh, what I was saying is on the watch part of it, they don't want us to stand up. Mm -hmm. Occasionally we get a stand. You're always behind the table. We're always behind the yep. desk sitting down. And, you know, I used to do hosting on Home Shopping back in 96, 97 in L.A. in a small station. And we always stood on our feet, yep. you know, five hours straight, you know, and that's yeah. what we did. That's what it was. At and, and I think you think better on your feet. But um, anyway, uh, you know, what people don't may not realize is that, uh, you know, when I needed to get some new TVs, I came to you for advice. <laughs> and I was pretty much ready to buy that 73 on that Mitsubishi. And mm -hmm. you said, you know, you'll be OK with the 65. Well, I think it sort of depends for most Don't people, worry. You know. You know, no one's well, no, I understand. I, you know, the, the thing for me is I have the 65. Yeah. So I'm partial to it. Um, I think once you acclimate to it, though, the bigger ones always look like they would fit just fine. And at the time when you bought yours, the 73 had sort of just come out. And I didn't think that yeah. the value was there. Because, you know, I think when you bought yours, the jump between the 65 and the 73 was massive. Now we have, you know, we have 73s that are thirteen ninety nine, if you can believe that. So yeah. not that we're here to you know, sell television. But, no, I listen, I yeah. love my Mitsubishi. This has nothing to do with plugging anything. Uh, you yeah. saw when you came in where I have it positioned and everything. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, I love that's right. it. You know, the, in, the interesting thing is that um, because I do what I do, people are always curious to know what TVs I have, what computers I have, and things like that. And so, you know, I think they think I'm going to have some, you know, fancy LED razor thin, you know, 70 inch, $5,000 television or whatever. And the Mitsubishi is great. I love it. Yeah. Easy to put where I want to do. And for the bedroom, up. I took the 40 inch Sony Google TV. I love that. And I love it too, man. I, you know, I, I use it for the internet in there too. You know, the, the funny thing with this whole television boom is uh, I remember going on the air the first time selling 720p plasma televisions for like $4,000 and thinking what a steal. You know, and it's amazing. You look and the stuff just keeps coming down and down. Yeah. 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 So, all right. You went from, you know, New York <laughs> law school, uh, you know, and all that, and then to singing and everything. And now you're into electronics yeah. and into home shopping. Mm -hmm. You've been at QVC. You've been a shop at home. I was in that shop at home building. You yeah. know, I liked it a lot in, in Nashville. I had a lot of fun there. A lot of uh, bloopers were created. We're gonna there. we're gonna take a look at that. Take a tour of those. Yeah. We're gonna definitely take a look at that for sure. And then shop NBC up in Minneapolis. Yep. Okay, mm -hmm. so you kind of been at, at you know some of the big ones around yep. Yep. around and, and everything. been uh, in the UK, Germany, and the Shopping Channel in Toronto. Yeah, I've been in the Shopping Channel in Toronto yep. as well. And what is it, Mississauga? I think they call Mississauga. It. Yeah, yeah, beautiful Mississauga. Yeah, it's some nice. of the finest truck stops in all of Toronto. I liked it up there, but yeah. uh, unfortunately, uh, it's very industrial. Yeah, we weren't uh, getting the numbers we needed to keep it going. I was going for about a year. I can give you some tips. Don't worry. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, man. You know, you're the right guy to give tips. I mm. mean. Appreciate that. You always have the biggest hours at uh, Shop NBC dollar wise. Now you know. Back in the day, <laughs> still there. The electronics produces, man. Back you, in the day, <laughs> we're working on. It. Okay, all right. We're working. Trying to get back up. Yeah. Well, all right. You know, it's funny you mentioned the bloopers. We have a couple of them to look at. I'm sure there's more out there. And I, I looked at these ahead of time, and I have to tell you, I think they're they're funny and all that. But I'm thinking to myself, God, I've done lots and lots of hours of TV. Not as many as you. I don't have that many bloopers. I know there was one time I cut my finger. I was trying to demonstrate how to change out the quick change strap and mm -hmm. how, I'm saying how easy it was and the mm -hmm. thing got into my fingernail and I was bleeding. Uh, that was about the only one I could think of. But you seem to have quite a few of them. I got a lot. And I'll tell you what, I mean, the, part of the reason I think is when I was a host at Shop at Home, my style was to be a little bit silly, a little bit goofy. You were. We did puppet shows. I remember you. We did French. We, you know, all cut dancing, singing, you name it, we did it. Um, I once had a Lovers quarrel with camera seven. Uh, okay. They put it out on the set. We got no fight, and it was, you know, just we did fun stuff like that. Uh, you know those uh, in the home shows. They used to sell uh, trunks, nesting trunks. You know these these things are like um, decorative trunks. Okay. And I did the whole presentation from inside the largest trunk. <laughs> that would be funny. We did stuff like but that, but, but because of that, I think. But we um, don't. We don't have that. On no, we don't have that. But because of that, I think when I did mess up, there were a lot of people ready to DVR it and put it up on, on the internet and things like that. So, um, you know, I, it, it may have just been that I was so prone to doing the absurd that people were more prepared to get it up on the web. <laughs> All right. Mm. Well, let's take a look. I mean, we're talking about some of your bloopers. Um, do you have that queued up, Ronnie? All right. Now, this is uh, which one are we going to look at first, Ronnie? 
All right, let's take a look at the long one. Check this out. Now, here's Elliot Smith, the professional on TV selling. Check it out. Look at this behemoth over here. This is going to give you 17, uh, this is your 17-inch desktop monitor. Now, you've probably seen something like that before. It, you know, weighs about 40 pounds. And it's basically going to take up your entire desk. You need a special desktop just to fit it on there. Well, guess what? This behemoth gives you the same viewable area as your notebook computer. Look at that. Look at that. The same viewable area as your notebook computer. This lightweight, powerful notebook computer gives you the same viewable area, yet razor-thin design. So you don't... Whoa. That doesn't happen every day here at Shop at Home, I assure you. <laughs> That's why you don't put big desktop monitors on little stools like that. But actually, yet, Elliot. <laughs> yes. I'm Hello. sorry, Elliot. Was I, did I disturb you? Were you <laughs> Hello, doing everybody. something more important? Um, <laughs> I am sleepy. It's the middle of the night. <laughs> well, that's not but a problem. What do you have coming up that's going to be exciting and wonderful? <laughs> you, you know, I, I'll tell you what. First of all, I can't hear anything. I can't see anything. It's the middle of the night. It's Memorial Day weekend. And, and I'm looking at... Well, I'll keep selling Moise a night then. I mean, because I got stuff to do. All right, go no, ahead, Elliot. It's good to see you, though. <laughs> well, that's a fun way to start off two hours of live television, isn't it? I'll tell you what. We have electronics coming up. And I promise you I will be more alert at presenting all of the wonderful technology we have coming up, including our most powerful digital camera ever, their video. Digital video is the number one quality, and you can say goodbye. Let's just pretend that didn't happen. Well, the, the nice thing is, you can say goodbye to these things. You don't need them. So you're hanging out with me. I am Sofa King. We Todd did. Ah, <laughs> suddenly that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, people just played a practical joke on me. <laughs> I could probably explain that if I had another 30 minutes, but I don't. People write messages to me. I read them. I have a thing in my ear. I say whatever I'm told to say. I'm really only 40% person and 60% earpiece. Once I take this thing out, I barely can stand up on my own power. You are now looking at my digital camera pictures without a single cable or wire. That's me before the surgery. Yeah, it was a pretty bad surgery, wasn't it? That's actually one of our newest show hosts, Matthew Martin. I think the only reason he does his hair like that is to prove that he can spike it higher than I can. We'll see about that, Matt Martin. Look at that. Wow. Hey. Hey, hey can, we, um, can we make sure we show that every show from now on? You know what? We're not even going to talk about the computer anymore. We're just going to leave that up. We're just going to leave that up. And that's Chuck's reaction. That's Chuck's reaction to what he's seeing there. These pictures were taken in rapid succession. I don't know what that is, but these are pretty entertaining. We see, you can hear, but you can't actually see all the partying going on, but there's quite a bit of partying that takes place during our fully charged program because we have such incredible products to show you. And now you're going to see an amazing value in DVD recording. So amazing, in fact, that we decided to put a really big exclamation point on the screen. It's called a shop spot. It's a limited time value on an exclusive opportunity at shop at home that's going to give you great performance. DVD recording at an exclusive price, that's worth celebrating. Here's the big exclamation point. Your shop spot is on the way. Shoot me! <laughs> For the plasma screen is the first thing you would have noticed when you walked into his house. This one literally just rolls away. Whoop. Literally, here we go. There we go. I'm going to do this till I get it. Come here. I'm not stopping until I get this. Come on, there we go. It was stuck as if you couldn't tell. It literally rolls away. 
All right, you know what I got to do to prove that that's easy? This one's stuck. There we go. It gets easier. It's brand new. It's right out of the box. There we go. Look at that. But the idea is clear. Now, it has just been, I have just been informed. There we go, Elliot. Pretty funny stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, while we were watching that, um, a friend of mine in New York texted me saying he's a funny guy, you know? <laughs> Only unintentionally. So. And the thing of it is, it's <laughs> funny to anybody who doesn't know you, but if they know you, it's even funnier. Well, you know, the thing with a lot of those clips is you have to remember, I'd be on the air 1,200, 1,400 hours a year. So, you're, and it's all live TV and it's unscripted. A lot of people aren't aware that, you know, TV shopping is almost, in, well, not almost, is entirely unscripted. So you're going to have moments like that, no, absolutely. especially in electronics. Um, some of those are from some of the first times I was ever on that network. So that would have been about eight or nine years ago. But um, I, there are some that didn't make it to that. And there's one that I'm sure we'll see later in the show that is the one that has kind of be, become the viral video, which I don't personally think is one of the funnier of the videos, but um, I think it's funny. I think it's all right. We're but the reason I don't think it's funny is because it's not a it's not a screw up. I knew what I was doing, which nobody. Well, believed, you know, you say that I don't believe that. Of course, think about it for a minute. Think about it. Okay, we're gonna, they don't know what uh, we're talking about. All right, about. all right. So when we see it, you can decide for yourself. And then I was on a Comedy Central program called Tosh Point oh, We got that. Where I got too. to do a web redemption for this for this mess up, this screw up. That we we dug it up. Yeah, but but the moral of the story is that. Uh, Though you know, some people their outtakes, their bloopers are sort of their shame. They're my favorite clips. I keep them all. I love them. I, I um, I I love the one where I drop the the computer and the television falls on top of it. <laughs> that, I, that's hysterical. Yeah, I absolutely love the one where I'm trying to pull the screen and make. I mean, those are some of my favorite memories. Okay, well, you know, we we hinted around it. Let's let's get to it. He's talking about the. Uh, the horse horse uh, moth clip horse yeah. moth okay horse moth take guy. check this out now here's a sales professional coming at you right now an air balloon other than me i click print and we'll print it out now while we're doing that let me show you something really impressive that picture remember the picture of the horse i showed you earlier well here it is blown up this is a big horse order now you get the camera you get the printer 4X optical zoom, Schneider lens, photo printer, SD card. Look at that horse. The bushy tail, the big teeth, the hooves. Okay, my producer, Tara Cates, just told me this isn't a horse, it's a butterfly. Yeah, actually, it may in fact be a moth. But look at what the zoom did. I mean, you can see details in the antenna. All right, all right. All right. Now, you hear me get, out. I'm going to give okay. you a chance. Tell us how you did that on purpose. Look, like I said, I was goofy on the air. So, I, you know, I was, I was messing around. Now, I don't know if we can do this, but if you can put up the beginning of that video without audio and, and roll it for a minute and then pause it, I don't know if you can do that. Because uh, I'll show you something. Anything. He's, he's amazing. So this is All right. Good. All right. This is going to be great because we're going to, on live Acorn Television, we're going to debunk the myth that I don't know the difference between a horse and a moth, which Tosh, Daniel Tosh, gave me the chance to debunk anyway with my web redemption. So I don't know why I want to, you know, go any further with that. But the, the thing you'll see in the video, if you notice carefully, so if we let it roll just a minute, I don't know if you can pause it when it comes to the wide sure shot. Can. Yeah. So not yet, but it's going to come to the wide shot where they show me holding up the big picture. And if you freeze it there, you see the stack of photos under the big photo? See that stack of stuff? Okay. Under the big photo. All right. That's a stack of smaller photos. All right. Right? The same photos that we blew up. The idea is we take the smaller photos earlier in the program, and then we show how great they look. Then we show the blown up versions. So I've seen this picture already in the smaller version jokingly misidentified it in the smaller version and now i am referring to the same joke from earlier do you see what i'm saying those pictures that's underneath no that, proof that, i mean that, of okay, course that, I those pictures you, right there yeah those so those are the smaller pictures so i held up the smaller picture i said look at this horse haha ha, funny joking when i hold up the big picture i say look at the horse again with the same picture but of course the people who put this on the internet don't have the whole clip, just the second part. And I've read things. If you go on the YouTube clip and you read the comments, people say, oh, it was probably a green screen and you didn't know what was on the green screen or you read the teleprompter wrong. First of all, there's no teleprompter. There's no teleprompter. Second of yeah. all, I don't know you know, what kind of industry they think we're running, but this isn't industrial light and magic. We don't have portable <laughs> green screens that we hold up and put you know, horse and moth pictures on. So it was really just a case of a silly joke that when taken out of context – 
looked like a colossal screw up. Now, I think it's great because a clip of that wound up in the Pixar movie Up. So they used my voice in the Pixar movie Up, which was really fun for me. I got to be on Daniel Tosh's show. They ran it on uh, Letterman, Leno, Talk Soup, all those shows. You know, So I really enjoyed it. It was my 15 minutes of D level fame. So okay. happy, happy it's out there. All right. Well, you know, you say you did it on purpose. I'm just because you're a friend, I'm going to buy it. Thank you, you know, the thing Daniel it, Tosh didn't believe me, that's for sure. Well, the thing, <laughs> you know, it's hard to believe because when I watch it, the way I read it is. Because, you know, when you're selling a lot of times the same thing over and over, and I think you sold the Mitsubishi probably for a year straight. <laughs> every hour of every day for a year. Yeah. I'm serious, you know. Mm-hmm. And it, this, it, it almost becomes robotic in your mind. You're, like, speaking the words, and it's just coming out. It's just coming out, yeah. Yeah, because you just repetition. Yeah, of course. And so, to me, when I see this clip of you, I think it's like, okay, now here's a picture of the horse. I mean, it's just like by rote. There's the picture of the horse. I, I get that. I, I understand that interpretation. And That's I am how telling, I interpret let, Let's put it this way. I'm willing to own the fact that I dropped a TV on a computer. I'm willing to own the fact that I've accidentally screamed on the air. And there's a clip of me doing all there, – there are other clips out there that are just as embarrassing. You'd think, why wouldn't I own this one, right? I mean, it's not like this is any worse than anything I've done. Um, but, but you know, if it makes people happier to think that I genuinely couldn't identify the the horse and the maw or the the maw. Well, you know, here's a, here's okay. another thing too. You know, you mentioned this this Tosh guy, and the thing is, you know, I'm a little bit older, so maybe mm-hmm. I'm not hip enough or whatever. I never heard of him. That's but, true. But the thing of it is, that's okay. The <laughs> thing of it is. Is that uh, tonight, today, uh, earlier today, when we were preparing for tonight, we, we dug up that clip of Tosh. You know, I've got some young people here on staff. It's the number one, uh, number one show on Comedy Right. I, and they were like, wow, he was on Tosh. He was, uh, who the heck is Tosh, you know? Uh, I, I didn't know. They were all impressed that you were on this, uh, is it Daniel Tosh? Daniel Tosh. You know, the funny thing is, when and you're I on TV Shopping, was. right? So TV Shopping has an older audience. So yeah. um, being on TV Shopping for as long as I was, uh, when I got noticed, when I got recognized in public, it was usually by people 40s, 50s, and older. Mm-hmm. Once I was on Tosh.0, it was people in their teens and early 20s. So it's, it's interesting how the demographic was very different. But yeah, it's um, it, he was a lot of fun. I got to go out in LA, uh, out to LA and shoot the show, which was, you know, it's, it's always nice to do something different. And I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick look. I don't know if we're going to watch the whole clip. But well, it is it is a, a longer segment. I think it's probably like a fifteen minute segment. the The part that's probably worth watching on is the actual web redemption itself, where they do the fake uh, TV shopping network. You know, because that's where he uh, he redeems me to prove that I can identify things on a. But picture. what I liked about the clip, we're going to take a look at it in just a second. Mm-hmm. Ronnie, are you ready for that? Yeah. Okay. When we do do it, what what it, what I like about it is they kind of took it and ran with it. Yeah. You know, and embraced it. And the cool and thing that's is, what's cool about it. This was uh, extemporaneous also. This was unscripted. So we, we had a lot of fun with it. And because it's not live TV, we were able to roll with it a little bit, have a little fun, and they, you know, they took the best of, of what they got. All right, uh, Ronnie, let's give it a shot. Let's check it out. Comedy Central. Elliot! Daniel! Thanks for meeting me in the field. Happy to be here. Got you one of these. Oh, thank you. That's to catch horses. Seems a little small. Wait till you see my stable. It's beautiful. I bought us a couple dozen horses. Are you ready to release the horses? Let's do it. Oh, and they're off! (laughs) Well, in your own words, describe what happened. That network was in trouble. After being around for several years, it looked like it was sort of the end. As important as it was to be a professional on the air, it was also sort of important to entertain ourselves. And uh, the clip was sort of the byproduct of a lot of boredom and a lot of fatigue. So you're telling me that you knew the whole time you were looking at a moth or a butterfly? I I did know. Horse shit! I I think it's pretty clear if you want me to identify. Was there a teleprompter? There was no teleprompter. Were you told that it was a picture of a uh, a butterfly and you were like, I'm just going to say horse? Well, see, when I picked it up and looked at it, I decided that identifying it as a moth wouldn't be as amusing as identifying it as something else. What I didn't know is that someone would record that, take that clip, and put it on the internet. So you were unaware that while on the Home Shopping Network, you were being filmed? 
People think that I don't know the difference between a horse and a mall. Well, here's what I thought. I still don't believe that it was intentional. I believe that you were staring and that it was just a peripheral glance mm -hmm. and, and that, that I assumed that there was probably a teleprompter that said you're looking at a picture of a horse. So to me, it was never a shot at, oh, this this host of the show is dumb. It's just that, oh, they put they wrote in the wrong thing in the prompter and he didn't really look at it and he's still selling this horse. It's a mall. I think that's where most people are coming I, from. I appreciate that. But if you read some of the comments on YouTube, you'd see that there is a darker uh, Again, I feel you went the wrong way with this. Minus the, the silly comments of people writing hurtful things, I don't think anyone truly thought it was a stupid I look at it this way. If people like it better to think that I genuinely screwed up, then I'm happy for that to be the end. So let's start over. I genuinely thought it was a horse. Who's your favorite pitch man? I like the guy from the ShamWow commercial. Why um, do you think he beat that hooker up? It, it's hard to know. I mean, Maybe you know, he was it, haggling. He you was know, pro right. Salespeople always trying to get the lowest price. How long do you think this? You know, was this uh, Tosh. I'm gonna have to get into this guy. Now, where would you? Where did you guys shoot that? We shot that at a park in L.A. Yeah. Um, and then we went to the studio and we did the uh, web redemption part where we held oh. up pictures. Is that uh, in in the 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 in the valley? Yeah. I, I he Hanson Dam. I have to level with you. I, I'm not familiar with the L.A. area that well. So I think that's the Hanson Dam. Yeah, Alpo they took park. me out to there. Yeah. Um, awesome. It was it was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. The thing that's interesting about that is, you know, when you watch the show, it seems like such witty repartee. But um, there's a lot of that. That was probably 40 minutes of sitting around and talking, and the editing is just amazing because they they cut it all together to make it look like just very clever repartee on him. And not to say that he's not very funny. He's a very funny guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I think one of the things that was uh, unusual for me was just the idea that what you're saying isn't going out over live TV. You know, because for me, everything I mean, we do everything, is live. Everything is live, right? So you have to be yeah. on it, and so it took me a minute to get into a comfort zone with it, where I didn't have to be on the money. Yeah. You could just talk, and they would, you know, piece it together after the fact. All right, cool. Now, listen, we're gonna take a, a little bit of a not a break, but we're gonna kind of change directions a little bit. Don't go anywhere. You're gonna be right in on I this. Can stay here. We're gonna. We've got uh, a gal uh, out there in uh, an old friend of mine. I shouldn't say an old friend because, you know, that dates me and her, but that's really not the case. But I have a good friend out there in Los Angeles, a former uh, columnist for the L.A. Times. And um, she's going to give us a little bit of a dish on the upcoming Oscars. Uh, did you get her online, Ronnie? No, what's her name again? Okay, uh, we're a little bit behind here. Don't worry, we're going to get to her. It's Candace Mayron, and you want to do the video. And we're going to try and get her get her in here. So while he's getting her uh, on the line, you know, the Oscars are coming up this Sunday night. Did uh, Now, are you aware of the movies that are up for nomination? I know some of them. I, I have, Admittedly, I haven't seen all of them. Um, you I, go to the movies a lot? I, I go to the movies a lot. Um, I didn't catch The Descendants. I, I saw uh, Midnight in Paris, I know, is one of them uh, that I enjoyed. So uh, I know you're going to talk to Candace about this. I don't want to steal her thunder because I certainly don't know what I'm talking about. But, uh, yeah, I have to say I have a rel relatively low percentage of Oscar-nominated movie viewing this year. Okay, mm -hmm. fantastic. Well, Ronnie, uh, let's go to Hollywood, and <laughs> let's uh, check it out. A show that is really a show sends you out with a kind of a glow, and you say, as you go on your way, that's entertainment, the lights on the lady in tights or the bride with a guy on the side or the ball where she gives him her own. can you can you hear us candace i hear you just fine can all right listen uh because of the uh the new hookup that we have we're now mobile compatible but what that means is you probably can't see the uh what we're showing while you're uh while you're uh telling us right um, I don't know. I think I can, but I'm not sure. Well, can you see me? Uh, <laughs> the reason I'm asking, this is a new hookup. We just we just came out with a new hookup that makes us mobile compatible. We're going through th like three different programs now, so I uh, wasn't sure if you are going to get the video feed or not. No, I see me with the Chiron of my name underneath it. Okay. All right, good. Then you're seeing the feed. Okay, good, Ronnie. All right. But I don't see you. <laughs> well, that's true because we're, you're seeing you're seeing the feed that's going out, which is perfect. All right, great, Candace. Well, listen, the Oscars are coming up, uh, you know, this Sunday. I know you're, you're a former columnist for the LA Times. You big history on you, and I know you take it very seriously. 
you know, every year. And uh, one of the things I miss about uh, being in Los Angeles are those Oscar parties every year. So what do we got going on this year? Well, this year it's a combination of a hot race and not such a hot race. Um, I, uh, by the way, yes, I was a Los Angeles Times columnist, but not in the entertainment industry. I just don't want to uh, overstate my abilities here. It's just <laughs> we, living in Los Angeles. You, well, you, you want me to clarify that, Candace? She was. A, you were a tennis columnist. Yes, the, a sports columnist. Yeah, but right. who are you kidding? You like men in tight shorts. We know that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, Candace, go ahead. I'm sorry. All right. So you asked if I would give some um, Oscar predictions, and I'm happy to do that. Uh, I have made a study of how the Oscars seem to ebb and flow, and I do talk to a lot of people that are plugged into the industry and read a lot of the um, articles and the information and check the other awards that have been handed out. I enter an Oscar race each year and so I've tried to make a study of this so that I can do better in the Oscar race. <laughs> okay, what do we have to look forward to Sunday night? What's the big deal? Okay, well, starting with Best Picture, it now seems to come down quite uh, handily between the artist and Hugo and from all that I can discern, the artist will walk away as best picture. The artist and Hugo. Okay, now I got to tell you, I'm looking at this list right now. I've seen two movies on that list. I saw Midnight in Paris. I love Woody Allen and Moneyball. And honestly, you know, listen, I love Brad Pitt. I love baseball. If you like baseball and you like Brad Pitt, you're going to love that movie. But honestly, as much as I love Pitt and baseball, does that really deserve an Oscar nomination? I'm sorry. Well, you know, frankly, I don't know that any of the movies are of that caliber. Um, the best picture I saw this year is nominated for absolutely nothing, and it was called The Debt, D-E-B-T, starring Helen Mirren. Everything about it was spectacular, the writing, the story, um, but it's not nominated for anything, so that I guess that's why I'm not running a movie studio. <laughs> One of the <laughs> One of the things that you're doing, Larry, uh, for Oscar contests is you're mixing up your personal feelings with what you think will win or not win. And a lot of people make that mistake. So if there's anybody watching that's going to enter an Oscar contest, forget about what you like and what you saw, but it's how this town thinks and how this town votes. And a lot of it will be block voting based on studio. A lot of it will be sympathy voting. And that's how this town works. Right, and I'm just curious, I, with my guest, Elliot, he goes to a lot of movies. Looking at that list, mm -hmm. nine movies up this year. By the way, did they always put nine? I thought it was five. Did you see any of these movies, Elliot? I saw, uh, well, now that the list isn't there anymore, I have to pretend I know what I'm talking about. Um, I saw Moneyball. I saw Midnight in Paris. I think there was one more on there that I let's saw. Go back. Let's go back to the list. the list. Yeah, <laughs> let's go back. to so There it <laughs> All is. All right, awesome. Um, I saw... While you're looking at that list, you guys, um, to respond to your question, it's a good one, Larry. At the very beginning of the Academy, which was in the late 20s, uh, I think 1927 was the first year the Oscar was handed out, there were 10 pictures nominated for Best Picture, and it was that way for a very long time. They shortened it to five pictures somewhere, I don't know when, but for most of my life it's been five pictures, and only two years ago did they lengthen it again in an attempt to spruce up the Oscars because they had gotten old and the uh, TV ratings are, haven't been what they want them to be. So that's why they opened it up to now 10, but if they can't find 10 to nominate, then there are fewer. Huh. It's so, more than five. All right, so there's nine. So you saw the same two I saw. Same two you saw. And I have to say, you know, the one thing that I, I find really interesting is... um. You know, I, I use the Rotten Tomatoes website as a way of deciding if I want to see a movie. I'm sure we're all familiar with this. They give a percentage of reviews that were positive and negative. What blows my mind is looking at some of those movies that are on that list um, from uh, uh, Tree of Life, Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close, War Horse. There were some pretty low uh, Rotten Tomatoes rankings. So I'm definitely seeing some movies on there listed for Best Picture that weren't critically acclaimed, certainly. Now, Candace, I know you go to the movies a lot, but be honest. Did you see all nine of those movies? Come on now. I can't even count that high. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I know you're in a lot of pools, and I know there's like a billion categories, and they're all obscure and everything else, and you're probably into every single one. But we're only going to touch on the top five categories. So, 
and we're starting with best. Like it's a big hurry or something here. <laughs> well, I know it's a webcast, but uh, <laughs> Elliot's got someone waiting for him. Oh, well, easy now. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, but seriously, on this this list of best pictures, and we probably should have saved it for last, but we started with it first. Who, what, what's your pick, Candace? Well, uh, there, it's not my pick. Remember again, I'm predicting that the artist will take best picture. And um, there's other substantiation for that. The artist won Best Director at the DGA this year. The DGA award always, with almost without exception, predicts who will win Best Director. And Best Director almost always goes with Best Picture. And since the artist is so well received in this town, um, there's no question I'm predicting it for Best Picture and Best Director. The small categories that you're denigrating are the ones that are the tiebreakers when someone's in an Oscar pool. And I will run through a couple of those in a minute. But to stay with the main categories right now, Best Actor, uh, I think, is a fairly close race. <clears throat> I'll predict George Clooney for Best Actor because he's George Clooney and because he cried. Um, <laughs> Wait a minute. Say that again? Well... <laughs> He cried on camera, and which to get a man's man who's high, an A plus man's man to cry on camera is sort of tantamount to getting an A plus female to show her breasts on camera. It's a big event. So, will this I be, prefer the latter. Will, will this be George Clooney's first? It'll be his first best actor. He has a best supporting actor win already. Um, if you think that. Uh, uh, Jean Dujardin is going to win Best Actor, you may be right, if that is your prediction. It's tough to predict between the two for Best Actor, but I'm going to mark my ballot as George Clooney will probably win it because he is so well-liked in this town and he has done nothing to ruin his chances. Well, you know, I, I love Brad Pitt, but like I said, I just don't think that was an Oscar role, honestly. But, you know, Brad Pitt and George Clooney are good friends, so they'll celebrate one way or the other, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, and th that's not quite – this town votes on who they like and who brings in the money in the box office and so forth. All right. Uh, before we go to actress, let's go to a supporting role, uh, Ronnie. Well, let's, what, which one are you going to pull up first, Ronnie? We're going to let Ronnie pull it up. He, Ronnie wants to go to the supporting actor, Candace. That one, I'll let him call, name his call. That one's pretty much a lock. No, we're not naming picks. We're just p picking which graphic, which category we're going to go to for you. <laughs> oh, fine. Supporting actor. Well, here's the list. Tell us about it. Well, Christopher Plummer will take the Oscar. Um, I have no idea why. <laughs> Other than he's old and he's never won one. Uh, there's no question Kenneth Branagh is the best actor in this group. Uh, Jonathan Hill is very popular right now, and uh, he's been on all over the talk shows. I don't think Nick Nolte or Max von Sydow have a chance in hell. As among those three, Kenneth Branagh and Jonathan Hill and Christopher Plummer, Christopher Plummer's been winning all of the other awards, and he's very well liked. Uh, so there's, I, I would say of the four acting categories, this is the easiest one to call. All right. Supporting actress. I'll wait till the screen comes up. Okay, you're on about a probably a couple second delay, but here Definitely. we go. Here we go. Uh, this well, I take it back. This is the easiest one to call. <laughs> <laughs> this one's the easiest to call. She's won every pre award, and she's black. So Octavia Spencer will win the best supporting actress. So, I mean, the African-American thing, Candace, I mean, that's not a lock. I mean, why, why is that a lock? Well, because there have been so few. And it's time to be, it's time to recognize uh, African-American actors and actresses for the amazing contributions they make to film. And so very few have uh, ever walked off of the big trophies. And that one's for the help, right? That's for the help. All right. I haven't seen that one yet. All right, well, let's let's go to, to you know, the, the actress. I mean, obviously, that's a, one of my favorite categories. So who's up for this one? Glenn Close, Viola Davis, Rooney Mara, Meryl, Meryl Streep again, <laughs> and Michelle Williams. Meryl Streep has 17 nominations uh, in her lifetime and two wins. 
and she's Meryl Streep, and she's an almost an unstoppable force. She can read nursery rhymes, and she would be nominated. But um, so again, here it comes down to Meryl Streep and Viola Davis. I don't think the other three have much of a chance. Uh, Meryl Streep, interestingly, her the case that for picking her as the potential winner is really strong when you realize she hasn't won since 1982 when she won it, her second award for Sophie's Choice, the first being wow. Kramer, Kramer in 1979. So the Academy mm -hmm. voters will feel, geez, it's been a long time for her, but they will also feel she'll get it again and again and again. And I, I'm definitely going with Viola Davis as the probable winner here. Michelle Williams is going to win one eventually, isn't she? She's fantastic. I'm sure she is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, well, I just, I know uh, she she play. It seems like she only takes these. She, the only thing that makes me laugh is I think she started her career on Dawson's Creek, if I'm correct, and everything she does now is sort of a tour de force, uh, uh, melodramatic role that she takes. I just the reason I bring it up is I just watched the movie Blue Valentine, and it's one of those movies where every scene is increasingly depressing. Um, yeah. So I, I feel like she's just she's lining herself up for this eventually. Candace, you said that um, almost like uh, you're not so convinced on Michelle Williams. Well, I just haven't seen enough of her work, and she's a tiny little person. You know, I mean, it's <laughs> <laughs> works for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very good. Very good. Well, you know, for whatever it's worth, I haven't seen those movies and I haven't seen those actresses. Well, well she's I, also got the sympathy vote, by the way, because she had the, the Heath Ledger thing, right? I mean, uh, yeah, but how long is that going to last? Come on. I mean, well, it's been hey. <laughs> Hey, you know, some storylines never go away. Well, all right, now, I got to tell you, I'm not, you know, I like the old stuff. So what is the Heath Ledger thing? She was, uh, is it married to or just in a relationship with? Neither. Uh, or, they were fit, They were already broken up okay. when he killed himself in his hotel room, but she has his child. That's what it is. Okay, she's his. Well, listen, uh, you wanted the dish. What I mean, I Candace has given us the dish here. But, you know, for whatever it's worth, I happen to like Glenn Close. I mean, who can forget Fatal Attraction? You, I wish I could. Every <laughs> 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 That's why I don't have a bunny rabbit. Tell you what, if you like Glenn Close and Fatal Attraction, you're going to hate Albert Knobs. She plays a man. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. Never mind. And by the way, you said Meryl Streep nominated again. Here's one for you. Who has been nominated? Well, who's won the most Oscars of anybody? Not just acting, but the most Oscars of anybody. No idea. Any Oscar whatsoever? I know. For, for ladies... Any Whatsoever. Uh, it could be, you know, like industrial light and magic or something like that. Well, but companies are not nominated. Oh, People okay. are. Okay. And uh, let me tell you, this person has been nominated 59 times and won it 22 times. Now, can you give us the category? No, I won't. Hmm. <laughs> I it's, could, but I won't. It's my show. I don't know. Walt Disney. <laughs> And as soon as I tell you who it is, you're going to go, I should have figured that out. So come on, you guys. I don't know. You can't give win. us a category. Huh? I don't know. Clint Eastwood. Who? I don't know. Danny Elfman. Walt Disney. It was oh, Walt you were Disney? Right. You said it. All right. I said, said. I said well Disney. It was, my, it was just a gut reaction. Who said Walt Disney? I did. The host. I didn't hear it. I did say it. <laughs> well, you know, expert. But uh, okay. as far as going, just one last thing, going back to, to the Meryl Streep thing, um, isn't the record holder for leading actress Academy, isn't it still Catherine Hepburn with four? It is the, she's the record holder for most acting um, wins. She has the most wins. She has four wins in the best actress category. Okay. So Meryl Streep, this would be her third if she could win. Yes. And it's really shocking to hear she hasn't okay. won since 1982. That's 30 years. Yeah, so, you know, that might weigh very heavily on the uh, voters' consciousness, but I still, yeah, it might weigh heavily on the voters' consciousness. I, I would not be surprised if Meryl Streep picks up the statue. Um, it, I wouldn't laugh at somebody who choose, who predicts that she's going to win. All right, well, we don't want to be laughed at, but okay, I don't uh, mind. before we say goodbye, um, you know, there's so many other categories, and I know you know them all. But what about the director? I mean, you know, I love Woody. Woody's my boy, Woody Allen, and uh, I like that movie, Midnight in Paris. I'm sure you hated it. 
But uh, that New York sense of humor of his, uh, does he have any shot at all? Woody Allen's a lock for original screenplay. Okay, for for, but, but I don't think he's even nominated for best director. Oh, he's but, not. He uh, didn't direct that movie. He may have, but I don't believe he's nominated. Oh, okay, all right. I could be wrong. I didn't check that because the best director DJA award always um, predetermines the Oscar award. It's the same voting group. That's why the DGA award is so accurate. The same people who can vote for that are the people who are allowed to vote for best director. Do you want to leave us with any other little tidbits on any of the other, what, 16 other categories? Yeah, I'll leave you a few that are a lock, and these will help uh, break the tie for people who are going to enter Oscar contests. The easiest to predict this entire year of all the categories is best foreign language film. That will be the film from Iran called Separation. Um, that one you could put money on if Vegas allowed you to do so. Animated feature will be Rango uh, in almost all probability. Well, it'll be Rango. Uh, original screenplay, Woody Allen. And, of course, best director, Michael Hazavanikas for Hugo. Okay, and what about the category of the, uh, you know, the one that Jaran used to be in sometimes? Um, what do they call that? The wardrobe or fashion or costume? Costume, <laughs> costume design. Um that's an interesting question. I'm. I would. I'll probably predict Hugo for that. Costume typically goes with period pieces, uh, but Hugo should do okay for costume. All right, Candace, we're out of time, but uh, that was fabulous, and I, I love your your whole setup there with the Hollywood and the tickets, and that's awesome. Uh, I'm glad you appreciate it. Thanks, Candace. Thank you very much. Have All a right. great show, guys. All right. Thanks. Much love to you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Well, you know, that was a little different. You know, we hadn't uh, ever done that before. You know, that was cool. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that um, Candace will be going to some party somewhere. That's a big I thing. I want to go to a party. That's a big thing in L.A. Going to you party? Know, going to party is a big thing in a lot you know, of places. Oscar, I, Oscar parties. You should try one sometime. Go to a party. Go to a party? Take I actually fun. just went to a Mardi Gras party Saturday show night. Off. Where are your beads? <laughs> They're in my room. Okay. Well, They're in the green later. room. Okay. Well, I'll show them to you. All right. All right. If you show them, well... <laughs> okay just the beads yeah just the beads all right now listen while we're uh, we're gonna go right into uh, our classic film zone while we're on the well while ronnie's getting uh you know barbara on the phone for the classic film zone we're gonna go from la to new york i'm gonna make another call out ronnie for the um free tickets we're giving away a pair of tickets tonight to the amc movie theaters so what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to send in a um an email right now. You've got five minutes. This will be your second chance to enter. And then at the end of the show, we're going to, um, you know, give away a pair of tickets. But you're going to put uh, in the subject line, Crystal. We didn't even ask Candace about Billy Crystal. Uh, but anyway, Crystal, C-R-Y-S-T-A-L, in the subject line, in the body of the email, you're going to put your name, city, and state. And um, you're going to send it to contact at acorn.tv, contact at acorn.tv. And uh, later on, we're going to give away a pair of movie tickets. It's kind of a movie theme you stepped in on tonight, Elliot. And we're going to get back to Elliot after this. But I think it's that time of the night now where we're going to go to the classic film zone. <laughs> Hello, Barbara. Hi, Larry. Hi, Elliot. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> well, I watched the whole Candace segment. That was fun. Yeah. Are you going to be watching the Oscars this Sunday night? Of course I am. Yeah, I, I would think you'd be singing somewhere. Uh, you know, before we get into the whole classic film zone tonight, and, you know, you picked this one out. I told you, I told her that Elliot is going to be our guest, and he's kind of a comical guy. You know, he's kind of a funny guy. So Barbara recommended The Thin Man. Well, yes, Elliot should know about this film, unless you already do. But, I mean, I think it's very, very witty, and it's it's low-key humor. It's not falling on a banana peel humor. I mean, it's, it's urbane, very sophisticated, witty dialogue. I only do shtick. 
You are a sophisticate. So. <laughs> at, at heart. As we saw earlier this evening. Yeah, quite clearly. Thank Re you for noticing. Real quickly, Barbara, before we get into this, I have to ask you, I know you just returned from the road last night. How was your, uh, you know, your quick, short tour? It was a pretty long tour, actually. It was, I was out for 10 days. Um, and, and I sang, um, I've heard that song before multiple times. So when it was playing for the opening of this segment, I was singing along. Yeah, the uh, Harry James song. Of course, Barb is the lead singer for Harry James Orchestra. And uh, you were in, what, Phoenix? And you were in Tampa or Sarasota, I believe, and in Wilmington, North Carolina. Yeah, that's pretty good that you remember that. Thank you. Yeah, was there any other spots I missed? Well, we killed them in uh, Venice, Florida. <laughs> in Venice, Florida? Okay. Yeah. So no, it was good. It was it was a lot of people. It was it was very nice. It Barbara sings old jazz. I mean, she's incredible. Um, okay, and uh, w just again before we jump right into the thin man here, you have any uh, upcoming uh, singing gigs coming up soon? Oh, what do I have going on? Well, look at my website, everybody, because I'll be back at the Iridium in New York City um, sometime in June. I'll be there again. And I'll be back at Blues Alley in May, I think, May or June in D.C. I, I have a lot of private parties coming up for some reason. This is the season, and that's where actually where we make some, you know, good money. So it's, but check my website. I'm, I'm always getting new stuff. All right, great. So, Barbara, here we go. It's the Thin oh, Man. You know what? I can't. I, I'm going to be on a riverboat. I have to tell everybody about that. Please okay. come on the riverboat cruise with the Harry James Orchestra. We start in Memphis, and we go up, down somewhere, the Mississippi, starting April 25th. So come, come along. I would love to have you. Just awesome. Saying. I'd like to come down there. Yeah, I wish you would come. Okay. Broadcast on the <laughs> we'll try to arrange it. Okay, let's All work right. on that. So right. this film this week is from a, a series of films. This was the first one from 1934, and it was nominated for several Academy Awards for director, for the star William Powell, and for a couple of other things, but it did not win. That was the year that it happened one night, swept the Academy Awards, and Frank Capra won and Clark Gable won. But this, this film became a very lucrative proposition for everyone, and they made one, two, three, four, five more films after this, and it was a radio <sighs> show for a while. And it's based on uh, the novels of Dashiell Hammett, and it's about a, a detective who's very witty and has this great relationship with his wife, Nora. His name is Nick. Her name is Nora. They are the Charleses, and uh, they, they just have a very natural rapport. The two actors, William Powell and Myrna Loy, made 14 films together. Even though they were never romantically involved, they were just very good friends and had this great chemistry. So this is the beginning of that chemistry, and uh, what the story is, is that Nick Charles is back in New York City. He was a detective, but now he's taking time off. He's married Myrna Loy. Myrna Loy is a bit of a society woman, has some money, and he's not working anymore, but she would like to see him do what he used to do. That It, it sends her. She likes that. So she's trying to talk him into taking this case, and... Uh, I guess the first thing we should show is uh, the it sort of sets it up where where you can see their relationship and what's it? It's called the six martini scene, Ronnie. So we can see how Nick and Nora interact with this scene. All right, let's do it. Nick, <laughs> oh, any luck? Yes, he's just round the corner. Your father? No, Macaulay. I'm just going to go and see him. Oh, oh, uh, uh, my wife. This is Dorothy Winant. How do you do? I'm sorry we have to rush. See, we're stopping in the Normandy for a couple of weeks. Drop around. See, it's... Well, we'd love to. Thank you. Goodbye. 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 Sit down, Oh, Leo. Yes. Uh, first, first yes, on the first one. Pretty girl. Yes, yeah, she's a very nice type. You got types? Only you, darling. Lanky brunettes with wicked jaws. Leo, compliments this season. Who is she? Oh, darling, I was hoping I wouldn't have to answer that. Come on. Well, Dorothy is really my daughter. You see, it was spring in Venice. When I was so young, I didn't know what I was doing. We're all like that on my father's side. By the way, how is your father's side? Oh, it's much better, thanks. And yours? Say, how many drinks have you had? This will make six martinis. 
All right. Will you bring me five more martinis? Leo, line them right up here. Yes, ma'am. Hmm. <laughs> right. That was fabulous. <laughs> Right after Prohibition ended, and they're they're definitely living it up. That was the one thing, you know, I, first of all, I need to eventually introduce you to my sister because she was the one that got me into all this old movie stuff. But she has for years been telling me about The Thin Man, The Thin Man. She loves The Thin Man and, and the whole series. And I really honestly had never watched it until this week when you when you picked it. I went out and, and got it and, and watched it. And honestly... You have to watch it two or three times to, re for me anyway, to really follow this and pick up on all the little subtleties that are going on in here. And now I can't wait to watch all the, you know, the additional ones. I bought the whole set, Barbara. That's, that's sort of the beauty of it. I'm proud of you, Larry. And I do have to meet your sister, definitely. But, you know, and you pick up more and more as you watch it. I, I've literally seen this movie a hundred times. And that makes it sound like I have no life whatsoever. <laughs> but I do really like this actor. I love William Powell, and he has my same birthday. I mean, not the same year. Well, what struck <laughs> I was going to say you look fantastic for your age. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing what science can do well, now. What, what struck me, though, Barbara, is the constant drinking. My God, they drink <laughs> every scene he's going for a drink. You know, she's going for a drink. They're drinking. He gets up in the morning. He has a drink. Every he's just caught. The, it's unbelievable. You, know, you have to have a well-stocked liquor cabinet to watch this film. It's unbelievable. It's it's hysterical, actually. It is. It is. And and, and I'm thinking what we should watch next is probably uh, when she tries to talk him into taking the case. But I just want to say that the actress playing the the I guess ingenue in it is Maureen O'Sullivan, who I love. She was actually the, the first Jane in the Tarzan movies, and she's Mia Farrow's mother. Hmm. Um, and she had a very long career in Hollywood. I, I, she was actually in Hannah and Her Sisters. She played uh, the mother in that. You like Woody Allen? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, uh, I, I don't recall... Uh, what's her name? Maureen Sullivan? Maureen Sullivan. She actually plays uh, Mia Farrow's mom in Hannah and Her Sisters. Okay. Is the you know matriarch of the family. I mean, she's a, she's an older lady then, but she's you know she's had a heck of a career. Yeah, 1934. So, okay. And she's darling. So she's in this scene, and this is where we see uh, you know she's very very upset because uh, her father and she, you know, she comes to Nick and Nora's apartment, and uh, so you get to see more of Nick and Nora interacting in their their sophisticated relationship. All right, let's check it's it out. It's called taking the case, Ronnie. Don't bother to announce anyone. Just send them all up. Oh, I know, I know. It's quite all right. They're all his the friends. latest news of the Julia Wolf murder. The police have found out that the beautiful blonde secretary was once a gangster's girl. They are now looking for the gangster. Clyde Weiner, the girl's employer, is still missing. This case is developing... Can't you fellas ever think of anything but business? Good case for you, Nick. Have you heard the news? I'm a gentleman now. Nick, the reporters. Salutations, boys. Oh, you're a man. I want to see Listen, I'm from the American Mr. Charles. And we were wondering if you'll give us a statement. We hear that you're here on the Julia Wolf case. I don't know anything about it. Oh, come on. Give us a break, will you please? Hey, listen. I never try to hear reporters. I'm telling you the truth. Then why are you in town? My wife's on a bender. I'm trying to sober her up. <clears throat> oh, waiter. Drinks, please. Into the kitchen, son, and thaw out some ice. <laughs> Grandma, what large glasses you have. Say, listen, is he working on a case? Yes. What yes. case? A case of scotch. Pitch in and help him. <laughs> Say, I've got to order some food. Isn't that a waste of energy? You know, that sounds like an interesting case. Why don't you take it? I have the time. I'm much too busy seeing that you don't lose any of the money I married you for. Room service, please. Well, it sounds like a good case. A girl mysteriously murdered. Nobody knows who did it. They haven't found any clues. No gun, no fingerprints. I'll bet you dollars to dog biscuits that they never thought of. I don't want to hear anything about it. <laughs> Is that my drink over there? What are you drinking? Dry. Yes, that's yours. Send me up a whole flock of sandwiches. Now, I, I'd like to telephone my mother and 
wish her a Merry Christmas. Well, why don't you? Well, I have, I have got any nickels. Oh, forget the nickels. There you are, right there. Go ahead. Thank you. Have a hunker? I'll have two hunkers. Oh, uh, give me long distance. I want to, want to talk to San Francisco. Nick, I've got to see you. Alone. Oh, come Hello there, come beautiful. Come on, I'll take you over in here. Oh, no, no, look what's come to our party. Come on, baby, oh, let's cross the ice I and get away her. from the wolves. <laughs> Who's the little brunette? I used to bounce it on my knee. Which knee? Can I touch him? Oh, baby? What's on your mind, Barry? You heard about Julia Wolf? Yeah? There. Oh, Nick, Nick, you're hurting me. Of course. That's what I intend to do. What are you trying to tell me? That you did it? Yes, I killed her. Sit down. I hated her for coming between my mother and father. She kept me from seeing my father. I went down there to ask her where he was, and she wouldn't tell me, so... So I shot her. How many times? Once or twice. Where'd you hit her? I hit her in the, in the heart. What'd she do? She fell over. She screamed? Yes. Which way'd she fall? She... she fell over backwards. Whom are you trying to protect? Oh, Nick, I... Oh, wait a minute. She was shot four times, she fell on her face. She couldn't scream because she was killed instantly. Who do you think did it? I, I don't know. Where'd you get this gun? I bought it in a pawn shop. Is that another lie? Oh, no, Nick, that's the truth. Oh, Nick. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, don't I... be silly. Here, take this drink. No, thank you. Want a part of your nose? Everything's over there. Make her take that. Where'd you get that? She brought it in. Trying to make me believe that she did it. What are you going to do with it? Nothing. Well, I find out if it's the gun that Julia Wolf was killed with. Keep her in here. Don't let the reporters get to her. They may believe her. <laughs> Say, is that Dorothy whining? Yes. Wait a minute. She doesn't know anything about it. And you said you weren't on the case. I'm not. <laughs> What I love about that scene, Barbara, is, um, you know, just the, the relationship again between Myrna Loy, you know, Nick and Nora Charles. He, she walks in, you know, most women walking in, seeing their, their husband in the arms, you know, holding, embracing another woman, they'd go crazy. And she just knows that, you know. He, I, yeah, it's so sophisticated and modern, really. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know of any modern relationships that work like that. <laughs> <laughs> So and if you can instruct me on where to find them, I'd be happy to inquire. It's fantasy. I'm, uh, Elliot, it's I understand. In Tinseltown, yeah. That's why we watch these things, so we can aspire to that. It's pure escapism. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I meant to mention that the, the title of the film is misleading, and people have been wondering about this for years, but The Thin Man does not refer to William Powell. It refers to the, the man who is actually murdered in the film, and it's the case of The Thin Man. But because it was so related to this film, they kept using it. So, you know, you were probably wondering. wondering no, I, I actually did read that, and because I guess that William Powell is kind of thin himself it kind of fits and people would just assume that right 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 i just watched him in um mr roberts today actually and he he just looked so good still when he was an older gentleman he was still so sophisticated and, and just cool i just i guess i have a thing about him you're furthering this image of you locked in a small new york apartment with nothing but old movies to watch <laughs> can i ask you how many cats you have <laughs> i have no cats. okay well then it's going to be all right <laughs> <laughs> Believe me. It's recoverable. Definitely going to be all right. Barbara's well, on the Upper West Side. Oh, well, in that case, I we take don't it all have back. cats there. I guess that's what I mean. <laughs> That's the implication. I know. Um, we should watch the Nick Gets Shot clip. Okay. But, um, I'm not sure we should watch the end of the film. I thought about this. Maybe we shouldn't show the the denouement where we see who did it because, you know, we don't want to spoil things. And it's. Sweetheart, listen, if, if people haven't seen it by now, it was 1934. I don't think we're really spoiling anything, but I'm, really? <laughs> it was 1934. So if they don't know the ending by now, you know. All you have to do is say spoiler alert and all is forgiven. Oh, that's true. That's true. I like that. Uh, well, right now we're actually going to watch Nick Gets Shot. And uh, again, this is a really great scene with Nora. Nora's just 
an amazing character. Myrna I mean, Loy, I really grew to love her in this. And, um, you know, I know she was in the, um, you know, the very first talking motion picture. And, of course, I mentioned to you, Barbara, I love Myrna Loy in uh, Mr. Blanding's Builds His Dream House with Cary Grant. But that was around 1948 or 49, I think, somewhere in that range. Yeah, we should do that some night. You know, but uh, to see her in this picture, you know, really, you know, gives you an appreciation of Myrna Loy. She's tremendous. She began by playing kind of exotic types. They didn't really know how to cast her. Um, and this is one of the first roles she had where she was, you know, they actually would put makeup on her and make her look like some exotic Asian beauty, believe it or not. All right, so well, let, let's do it then. Let's, let's watch the scene that you okay. want to see. Here we go. Please, Ronnie. Can't you get to sleep? No. Well, maybe if you took a drink, it'll help you. No, thanks. Well, maybe it'll help if I took it. Everybody says you're a grand detective. Well, they were kidding you. I'd like to see you work. Tomorrow morning, I'll get you a whole lot of detective stories. I know, but that girl's in a tough spot. There's nothing I can do to help her. Well, she thinks you can. Wouldn't hurt you to try and see if you could. Well, darling, my guess is... Wine and kill Julia. Uh, Dorothy knows about it. The police will catch him without any help from me. I think I would like that drink. <laughs> My darling. I'll give you your Christmas present now if you'll give me mine. At breakfast. Well, it's Christmas now. Gonna give me. I hope I don't like it. Well, you'll have to keep them anyway. As the man at the aquarium said that he wouldn't take them back. Did you hear a knock? Yes. Well, it might be something important. I'm sure it is. Mr. Charles here? Yes. I gotta talk to him, that's all, but I gotta do that. All right, come in. You wait here, I'll tell him you're here. Hey, what in the name of... Someone to uh, see you, dear. Well, that's good. I'm afraid I have to go to sleep. Come on, get up out of that bed. Let me straighten this up. You're worse than an infant. Funny. These those blankets must be a little cockeyed. Mm. Right, Esther? You've got the funniest look on your face I ever saw in my life. Hurry up, go on after that man's waiting for you. I gotta talk to you. I want you to tell me something. I want you to give it to me straight. Get me? Hey, would you mind putting that gun away? My wife doesn't care, but I'm a very timid fellow. You idiot. Ask to ask him. All right, shoot. I mean, uh, the, what's on your mind? You don't have to tell me you're tough. I heard about you. I'm Joe Morelli. No, I never heard about you. I didn't knock Julia off. All right, you didn't. I ain't seen her in about three months. We was all washed up. Well, why tell me? I wouldn't have any reason to hide her. She was always on the up and up with me, but that dirty little Nunheim, he got sore with her because I clicked and he didn't. And he put the finger on me. Well, this is all swell, brother, but you're peddling your fish in the wrong market. I've got nothing to do with this. Now, listen, Studsy Burke says you used to be okay. That's why I'm here. Did Say, I how is Studsy? I didn't know he was out of stir. Oh, he's all right. He'd like to see you. But listen, what's the law doing to me? Did they think I did it, or was it just something else to pin on me? If I knew, I'd tell you. I don't know anything about it. Ask the police. That'd be very smart. That'd be about the smartest thing I ever did me, that a police captain's been in the hospital three weeks on account of we had an argument. The boys would like to have me come in and ask questions. They'd like it right down to the end of their blackjacks. Now, I comes to you on a level. Studsy says you're on the level. Why don't you be on the level? I am on the level. If I knew anything, I'd be... What's that? I don't know. That makes this your party. Open up, please. Why, you two-timing? Hey, go, boy. Hey, Bob. Nora. 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 Stick him in that bottle, will you? What knocked her out? I did. 
She was on the line of fire. Did somebody call a doctor, will you? Here, baby. Sweet. <coughs> Help me out the bed with her, will you? Are you all right? Baby. <coughs> you darn fool, you didn't have to knock me out. I knew you'd take him, but I wanted to see you do it. <laughs> There's a girl with hair on her chest. Nikki! Yeah? Nikki! Nikki, are you hurt? No, he just grazed me, that's you all. You are? Somebody get a doctor. Now, there's one call already. Get into bed. Are you all right? Sure, I can't even feel it. I'll get some towels. Hmm, oh. pretty close. Grab a shot, will you? There you are. But you'll be okay. Tough luck. Ah, oh, shut up. Here, darling, use this. Ah, oh, baby, it's only a scratch. You want a drink? What do you think? <laughs> yeah, I know. What do you think? It's the best. It's just the best. And she just, she takes it on the chin, definitely. You know, he slugs her in the face, you know. Anyway. Uh, know. Just, that's a wife. Just classic, classic. It is. It's great. So uh, do you guys want to see any, anything more? Well, what else do you have? I mean, we can't w watch them all, but what else you got? Well, we could watch the Christmas morning scene uh, where, where she's given him a gun for Christmas and he's given her a mink coat and a watch. Yeah, but he didn't even know he gave her the mink coat in a while. Speaking of Asta, their, their dog. All right, well, that, that's, a, that's not a real long one. Yeah. It's famous, the, the terrier. So we probably should look at Asta. Okay, so this is the morning after he was shot, right? Yes, right. So they're just laying around. And, and I just wanted to say one thing. You know, the, the movie The Artist has that adorable dog in it. I think it's a Jack Russell. So this is a history of... Of, of lovely pets in the movies, and Asta was certainly one of the first ones, so we should definitely see this. I have not uh, seen the, the artist yet, but I'm definitely going to run out and get it, or it's go so see good. it. It's so good. I saw, oh, I saw almost everything this year, because I'm Screen Actors Guild, and they send me the screeners, so I've already voted for the Screen Actors Guild thing, but um, I'm anxious for the Oscars. Did you think Candace's picks were right, or was there anything in there that you thought she might miss? I personally, I mean, what she said to you about you letting your personal feelings get involved, I, I don't I don't know if I think they're going to give it to George Clooney. I, I don't know if they're going to be that easily. You know, I do, I do think he's a very nice man, but I don't think that's an Oscar-worthy performance. I, and I do like him, but I, I don't think he's going to be the one. All right. So we'll see. All right. So again, set up, what, what are we going to look at now? Now we're going to look at Christmas morning, and it's another Nick and Nora moment sitting in their uh, apartment, uh, just just being themselves. All it's right. It's called a Christmas morning. All right. This will be it. Well, I hope you're satisfied. Huh? What am I? You're not in a shooting gallery. Ah, oh, but sugar, this is the nicest Christmas present I've ever had. You act as though it were the only Christmas present you ever had. Hmm. Say, where'd you get that wristwatch? It's a Christmas present. Yeah, I'll give it to you. You did? Well, you must admit, I've got pretty good taste, haven't I? You finished with this? Yes, and I know as much about the murder as they do. Oh, I'm a hero. I was shot twice in the Tribune. Well, I read where you were shot five times in the tabloids. It's not true. He didn't come anywhere near my tabloids. Ah, bullseye. Hello? That's a great line, isn't it? Yeah, it was kind of like Elliot's line earlier, <laughs> you know, where you had said, uh, 
There was something that was similar to that about. I the, assume it was witty, whatever it was. <laughs> <laughs> of course it was. Can only assume. <laughs> All right. Be the next Nick and Nora, Elliot. I, I like the sound of that. Yeah, okay. I am certainly a Nick without a Nora, so taking applications. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, everybody, thank you. Thanks, Bar- Barbara, thank you so much, and um, I don't know what you've got in store for us next week. Maybe we can chat tomorrow. Yeah, let's definitely do that, and, and have fun watching the Oscars. We can talk about that, too. Yep, absolutely. It's great to talk Bye. to you. Thanks, Barbie. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Ronnie. Thanks, okay, Mallory. Much bye-bye. love. Okay, bye-bye. All right, the thin man. Okay, now we can get back to our thin man over here. <laughs> Too kind. Elliot Smith. Well, you know, Elliot, we talked a lot about your bloopers. We talked a lot about, you know, the home shopping thing and all that. But um, I know you have a lot of outside interest, too. I do. Yeah. And, and I know that. And I want to get into some of that. Um, soccer. Oh, it's it's my passion. Yeah, absolutely. Tell us about that. Um, I am a fan of uh, European soccer, or as everyone would prefer to call it, football. I've uh, been a huge fan for years. I worked in England uh, briefly with QVC UK, and I lived in Paris for a little while in college. And so during that time, I fell in love with a London-based football club called Arsenal. Uh, They are easily the finest football club in all the world, and I've been moved to write a blog about them. I'm on Twitter, tweeting about them constantly, do a lot of podcasts um, with some great guys um, who are kind enough to have me on the podcast to talk about them. But uh, going back... Uh, into the late 90s, um, you know, I, I just I got so caught up in this club. And then during the early 2000s, they went through a period of unprecedented success and, um, you know, won some league titles, uh, FA Cup titles, which is a, a big cup competition in England, and uh, made it all the way to the Champions League final against Barcelona, which sadly we were defeated 2-1 after taking a 1-0 lead. But um, going through a bit of a rough patch right now uh, in our recent history, uh, those who know the longer history of Arsenal know that uh, rough patches come and go, but this is this has been uh, one of the longest periods of of uh, with, with a barren period in the club's history recently under the current manager. So it's been a little trying. But the thing I love about European football is the passion, the enthusiasm. Um, you know, when you get on Twitter and you interact with with other fans, and Twitter's so great for this because I can interact with fans all over the world, and particularly back in England just the incredible passion people have for the sport. We consider ourselves a sporting nation here in the U.S. Absolutely. But the way we approach sports is nothing like the way uh, European football fans approach their clubs, and it's so easy to get caught up in the passion of it. And actually, this Sunday, uh, my club, Arsenal, plays our most hated rival. Now, how do you follow them? I mean, we're here in the States. Mm-hmm. We don't get them on TV. You know, it's, it's really funny. The irony is I actually get to see more games on TV here than many of my uh, – uh, UK-based friends get to see there because just with the uh, channel choices we have, I'm a DirecTV subscriber. Okay. Uh, and the the TV rights right that that we have, I'm actually able to see every Arsenal game, just about every Arsenal game. So live. it's not an internet following. You're seeing no. it on DirecTV. Okay. I'm seeing it yeah on that 65-inch Mitsubishi. So um, you know, it's like my own little uh, seat at the Emirates Stadium uh, every morning at around well every Saturday or Sunday whenever it is at around 7:30. Actually, um. We'll be playing at 7.25 Central Time this Sunday morning. And I can assure you after a Saturday night out, uh, that's not a time of day I enjoy being up. But Do you record the game? No, I get up and watch them so I can be on Twitter tweeting along with uh, some of the people that follow it and you know, have a chance to sort of experience that camaraderie. Let's, you know, uh, unfortunately, I didn't have time to prepare that graphic with your uh, Twitter account. But sure. let's, let's make sure we share it with everybody here. I'd love to. Because it's more than just following the arsenal. It follows, you know, basically everything that you do, right? Well, it, I mean, it, it is a Twitter account that I have devoted almost exclusively to arsenal. Oh, it is? Okay. okay. But it's Yankee Gunner. Yankee, like, because I'm a Yankee. I'm here in the United States. Uh, and Gunner, because Arsenal are the Gunners. Um, so it's Yankee Gunner. So if you go to Twitter, it's at Yankee Gunner. And um, you know, the thing that's so fun about Twitter, though, that I, that I love, a lot of people don't understand Twitter. But Twitter is great for me. Uh, f- you, un- you don't understand. Not enough. So, all right. So let me explain. Not, not right? well enough. So he, I live in Minnesota right now. Right. right. Not a lot of football, soccer right. fans here, particularly European soccer fans, and not a lot of Arsenal fans in particular. But there are millions of us around the world. And so I can create this Twitter account devoted to Arsenal and follow people on Twitter who are also devoted to Arsenal and then create a community of people that I can interact with on an instantaneous basis, like a group of friends, 
and they're all, all over, the, over world. the world, right? And so on match day, when I'm on my couch in Minnesota, you know, hung over and bleary eyed and rooting on the team to now. Are you tweeting on the things. iPhone or using I, an iPad? I'll use or the a iPhone and the iPad, the computer, whatever happens. But usually, I'll just use the iPhone. Easier to sit on the couch and do that. But um, it really lets you connect with people who have similar interests. So if you've never been a Twitter person, you find that interest, that hobby, that passion. For you, it might be old movies. Yeah. And you create a Twitter account. You know, it could be Old Man Larry. You know, just Look, for example. I, I need a Twitter expert on the right. team. Okay, there you go. So you create, you know, you create, you know, movie fan Larry, whatever it is. Okay. And you start following other people that are movie buffs, that are journalists, that write about movies, that are movie reviewers. And what will happen is you'll create this community of people that are constantly interacting specifically on the topic of old movies in your case for me okay. it's european football generally and specifically so, so right now if if while we're sitting here you with your iphone you mm -hmm. do a tweet yankee gunner so uh, i'm on chilling with larry megan we've got Acorn. people from TV. twitter right now watching us yeah okay i can tell you well, some then, of their, then, some then, then let me throw this out there anybody who wants to talk about the arsenal and ask elliot smith a question uh right here on our screen at acorn.tv you can give us a call on the studio line in malibu 310, we're in Malibu, by the way. That's awesome. That's Three, so warm here. 310 734 8548. You can actually see it right below the right below the screen there. Give us a call. Elliot would love to take your question, whether it's about electronics or the arsenal, but I'd love to hear some arsenal talk going on because I, I don't really know soccer that well. And then I just know that when the ball goes in the net, you cheer, basically, you know. Mm -hmm. But also well, that, yeah, and that, that hasn't been happening for us very frequently. Oh, really. it hasn't? We had a bad a bad week. We got knocked out of two competitions. So do week. do a tweet while I'm making a speech. I'm here. tweeting as we speak. Elliot's gonna put a tweet out there. Now remember, we're almost at midnight central time here. We're getting close. Mm -hmm. Anybody out there, if Arsenal fans Fans, we got Elliot here. You're a diehard. I'm warning you, Arsenal fans uh, are you know, diehard. Well, and they 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 can be a little edgy, so it depends on what well, your that's tolerance cool. is. All right. No, well, but, you know, but, the one thing I will say is this is a a, a very uh, nervous period for us because, you know, the, I guess the closest thing you could say in U.S. sports, you know, you have the Yankees and the Red Sox. Right? Yeah, I'm a Yankees so, fan. Yeah. Okay. Um, Arsenal and Tottenham Hotspur are bitter rivals, and actually, um, Arsenal and who? Tottenham Hotspur. They're both North Tottenham? London teams. Yep. Tottenham? Tottenham, yep. Okay. Tottenham Hotspur. Um, the, their logo is a chicken standing on a basketball. Really proud, okay. proud of them for that. Um, but so they've always lived in our shadow. They never won the league uh, since color television's been around. Um, so they've, they've always had sort of an inferiority complex towards us, and, and rightfully so. Okay. Because they are inferior. But, um, <laughs> but this season they're ahead of us in, in the league table, and we play them at our stadium this weekend, having lost to them at their uh, – well, I guess you could call it a stadium. You could also call it an outhouse, I guess. But um, God, this is so, bad. So it's going to be man. bad. Sunday, Sunday's a big, big, big game for us. And really, if we don't win that, our chance of overhauling them before the end of the season is pretty slim. So what's so. the what's your record then? Oh, do we know? Ooh, uh, I, yeah, I can bring it up. I don't know it off the top of my head. I, you know the way it's measured in um, European points. football's points. Points, right? So uh, let, let me take a look at that. We're we're currently in fourth. We're tied for fourth place, but a head-on goal difference. And they have a playoff. We're ten play points back of Tottenham. Do they have There's playoff? no playoffs? So if you win the league by finishing top of the league, but the really important thing is the first four teams, the teams that finish top four in the English league, get entrance into next season's Champions League, where you play all the best teams from around Europe. Okay. So we've always been in that under our current manager. So right now. We are sitting on 43 points. Tottenham's 53, so we have 13 wins, four draws, eight losses. That's not bad. It's pretty bad. 13 wins and eight well, losses? So the, the thing, and, and four draws. The thing you have to understand about English football is there's haves and have-nots. It's more like baseball than other sports here. So, you know, you're not supposed to – if you're one of the good teams, you're not supposed to lose. Elliot? Mm-hmm. Will we put the word out? Oh, We've we got go. Jeff from Sacramento. He wants okay. to talk to you about the Arsenal. Jeff, say hello to Elliot. Elliot, how are you? I've been uh, following you on Twitter for a while, and I've had the opportunity to uh, have a couple little mini conversations with you, and I, I enjoy what you do on Twitter. So thanks a lot. Oh, thanks, man. I'm glad you called. What? Uh, just out of curiosity, what's your Twitter handle? I am uh, British Footy for us. Oh yeah, I know that account well. Yeah, well, it's good to talk yeah. to you. Put yeah. a voice to the yeah. tweets. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So you nervous for Sunday? To... <laughs> I am. I am. Uh, you know, it's this is one of the few years that. I hate to say this, but my expectations are pretty low. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I hate to say this again, but I would be okay with the draw. And I cannot remember the last time I said that, you know, going into a North London derby. Um, so it's, it's going to be a tough one for sure. 
Yeah, it, I'm, I'm, I'm really worried. And I think, uh, do you ever listen to um, the Tuesday Club podcast? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for I those who don't know, uh, Alan Davis is a, is a comedian and celebrity from the UK who does a podcast, a very funny podcast. Do about you the ever Arsenal. join in on that? Or? Uh, I haven't been on that podcast, no. But, um, uh, you know, they, they said, and Jeff, I'm sure you heard this, they're worried about what happens if we get turned over really badly on Sunday. And, you know, I'm with you. Even a draw at this point with as fragile as this team has been, I think would be great because I think – that sort of late season collapse could start really early if we get turned over at home on Sunday. Now, when you say turned over, that means Be- beaten get... badly, taken pa- out to the paddle woodshed. out, taken behind the woodshed. Okay, yeah, exactly. And and you know, I just have nightmares about Adebayor running uh, to the away fans, uh, you know, sliding on his knees uh, celebrating. I can't bear it. Doing it again. Yeah. So let me ask you something. Your opinion this summer: Arsene Wenger stays or Arsene Wenger goes? Oh God! Is this one of your? That's players? our manager. <laughs> oh. Legendary manager. Yeah, it's so tough. It's, you know, um, it depends who's out there. I mean, I, I don't want to get too deep in the soccer because I don't want to alienate other people, but look what's kind of happening with the Wolves right now. And I know that couldn't happen to us, but that's a club that just fired their manager, and now they can't find anybody to take over the reins of that club. And now, obviously, Arsenal are on a different level than Wolves are. But um, it, it's just going to depend on who's out there. Yeah. I, would, I can't imagine firing him and then – Wondering who's going to fill his reins. I mean, it'd have to be somebody that could slide right in. You know, he's a, he's an amazing person. He's a great manager, but you know, something has to change there. I, um, I agree. I don't know if it's necessarily him or the board, but we, we need to change. I think a better example, even than Wolves, is Liverpool, right? I mean, they they didn't like Benitez, got rid of him. Hodgson failure. King Kenny hasn't really done much better for him. They spent a lot of money. Doesn't look like they're going to make the top four. So, you know, that could easily be us. All I can say is. My biggest concern, and, and you see this in any kind of sport really, is you want someone that can motivate their guys. And right now it doesn't look like these players are fighting for the manager, and that's really that's really the part that's most worrying. Wow. I, yeah. that's, that's, I hate that. Yeah. But, um, uh, Jeff, let me ask you. You're, you're obviously, you're on this Twitter uh, <laughs> society, I guess, whatever it's called here with Elliot. Yes, sir. Do, do me a favor. Because, uh, you know, it's hard for Elliot to tweet while he's here, although he's pretty good. He can, I'm doing it. <laughs> he's, he's doing it with one hand while he's uh, drinking with the other. But anyway, uh, what I'm saying is do me a favor. Go out there. Throw a tweet out there to all your circle of Arsenal fans. I'd love to get somebody who will video Skype us. I mean, we want call-ins, too. We'll take call-ins. But while we've got the man here, Elliot Smith, he writes <laughs> blogs and everything else, let's get someone with a video Skype. You just Skype Acorn TV. You know, we'll approve it. You know, we you request the friendship, and then we, I'd love to put Elliot on a split screen with some Arsenal fans. I definitely will. I know, you know, he has so many followers. He, he's quite large in the uh, <laughs> Arsenal community, especially the, the, you know, the North American or United States Arsenal community. So you figure if he's tweeting it out, I'm pretty sure somebody will jump in. That's why I jumped in on this. Yeah, I but, appreciate it. Well, and I, I can assure you, I'm not called large uh, very often, so I, I appreciate uh, the reference. There's his self-deprecating stuff. <laughs> so that's what I love about Elliot, his self-deprecating mm-hmm. sense of humor. But, yeah, okay, so you put the tweet out there, but you didn't specifically say I'll do it. video I'll do, Skype. I'll do it. I want to get split screens with some of these Arsenal fans. because What's I want the to Skype s- account? Acorn TV? Acorn TV, yep. And they can watch us on acorn.tv, okay. www.acorn.tv. And they're seeing a live stream. This is live. We're in Minneapolis. But um, so you guys talking about your following is large and whatever. How often are you actually putting out new blogs? Is it once a week? Well, I, I uh, as you know, I've gone through some personal life changes over yeah. the past few months. And so the blog has taken a backseat to that. But just to put it in perspective... I've written 38,900 tweets. Yeah, but so how many? 39,000 tweets. But, but blogging, don't you write well, an right, article? Well, I, I, do write, I do write blogs. I haven't done it in a few months since this stuff with my personal life went on. But okay. I was blogging every day for, Were you really? for a few years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And usually like 500 words or something? Well, as, as anyone who's read my blog will tell you, unfortunately, mine tend to be more like 1,500 to 2,000 words. So very few people make it to the end of my blog. <laughs> my blog. Is that right? Yeah, they're tedious to say the least. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, and that's the thing. What a passion. All, what a passion. passion. Yeah, it's all about the passion. That's right. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yep. Well, and by the way, I mean, uh, you know, the, the thing that I think is great about, you know, this European football thing for people who aren't fans of the sport, there's a lot of ways to watch it. Fox, Fox Soccer, Gold TV, Fox Soccer Plus. But the more important point, ESPN has some games, is that 
first of all, if you don't like commercials, there's no commercials except for halftime, which is great. But the thing that I love is the passion and the drama. And, you know, people say there's not enough scoring. But you look at a game like basketball where you only need to watch the last two minutes. That's true. You know, and then you have a game like soccer, football, where Every it can minute. turn on the, the slightest referee decision, the slightest miss kick, you know. The craziest play, there were Champions League this week. Two games were won or lost, depending on who you support, in the last 30 seconds of the game. Now, I understand you have this team that you have a tremendous passion for, yep. but when we get to like an Olympic or a World Cup, World you, Cup is World really Cup, but I mean, would you actually pull for the U.S. Team? Of, of course I'm going to root for the U.S. I mean, we're obviously not a world power. This summer is the European Championships. Um, okay. And usually your allegiance to a team might have to do with having players from the club you support. Um, England just fired their manager. That tournament's this summer, so it'd be interesting to see how they so go. So you also pull for the English team? You know, the funny thing is I don't, because the English team is comprised primarily of rival players to my team. Really? Yeah, okay. so a lot of times, and English guys who follow me on Twitter, I apologize, but a lot of times I'm rooting against the English team, which can be easy to do. They have players like John Terry, um, who's not particularly likable. To, you know, just to name one, Wayne Rooney, Rio Ferdinand. Do you, he's agree? Easy to hate. do you agree with what he's saying, Jeff? Are you still with us, Jeff? Uh, all right, looks like we lost Jeff. But listen, let's get some more callers in here. And uh, this is great. This is fascinating because I have a well, passion so, for baseball and football. Well, and, and you know, the but interesting thing is ba baseball is a great example. You know, I hear a lot of times that people say soccer is not high scoring enough for the American audience. But the funny thing is baseball, if we get a 1-0 result, you say, oh, what a pitcher's duel. Right? We just have the history of it, so we're more familiar with it. A classic game. Right. The thing I love about soccer is you have football is you have incredible drama but you also have incredible action and some of the skill you see is remarkable and it's growing in this country it, it's definitely growing the thing that people ask me most of all is why don't i follow the mls major league soccer which is okay. the u.s league and the problem is the the level of competition and skill that you see isn't as high but here's an interesting thing uh new york red bulls which is an mls club okay they have a player named thierry Henry, the greatest player in the history of arsenal football club okay. the club that i support he went on loan to Arsenal for a couple weeks in January and February and won us two games with goals at the end of the game wow. while he was on loan there. And they, there's a statue of him outside our stadium. For two games. For, he, he won us a couple games. Yeah, so, I mean, it was like a fairy, fairy tale stuff. Um, it would be like Michael Jordan going back to the Bulls and hitting the game-winning shot in a couple of key games. So it was really, a, really an exciting time. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, that, that's interesting. You put out a call. Boom, we had a, you put out a tweet. We had a caller, you know. Yeah, you know, the, the thing that's that's great about Twitter, too, is that, um, you, you know, you, you do get, like anything on the Internet, you get the extremists. But I, I can say that I've been very fortunate to meet some really great people through Twitter and just through the love of Arsenal mm -hmm. that will be friends of mine outside of football because of their, um, because, because of meeting them on Twitter. Okay. Fantastic. So now, I think, did you also mention that you were doing a podcast too? D d done some podcasts. I actually just had a podcast come out with um, uh, a couple guys that I follow on Twitter and they follow me. Um, uh, Arse to Mouse is one of the uh, uh, accounts. And then Dave McMeesey and these two guys are from uh, from London. They're London-based. Okay. We put a podcast out just, I guess it came out yesterday. All the right, Arse so, to Mouse so, podcast. So what, yeah. You know, I obviously I do live streaming webcasts. Right. Mm -hmm. But... This podcast thing, I think I kind of missed it a little bit. So it's so this, is it just live, without the video. But is it not live? Or? No, we, we record it and then put it up on iTunes or on the website for direct download. And you can just pull it down anytime. It, I'll be so doing it's, one. It's an audio file. There's it no, is an audio file. That's no right. Video. Pure audio. It's just an audio file. Um, okay. And then. Uh, so you'll sit down and just record. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. And then upload. And then upload it. And I, I join them via Skype. They record that and then edit it. This uh, weekend, I'll be doing one here in the U.S. called uh, Arsenal Review U.S. Now, how often do you get back to London to actually, do you go back once a year? I, I was going back quite frequently, and then uh, because of some of the turmoil in my personal life, which I'm more than happy to discuss, but it nah. doesn't have to be. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm an open book, but uh, I haven't been back. And I'm the same way. I had intended to go back uh, for an upcoming match against AC Milan at the Emirates Stadium in London, uh, but we performed so poorly in the first leg that that game is probably now not, not going to be, it's going to be meaningless, so I'm looking for a better opportunity to get out there to see them. 
So you don't have anything booked right now? Uh, no, that was that was going to be the plan. I, you you know, with my schedule, I have to book things short term. Oh, I know. Right? You, I can't you, and I, you and I right. couldn't hook up for a can't, month. No, can't plan in advance. Well, I mean, we go back to the first of the year. That's New exactly Year's right. Eve. We're trying to get this together. Yeah, I, I'm still waiting to see what my schedule, my TV schedule for this weekend is going to be. Just it, by, You know, by it, I, it looks like we had someone on the line there. I think we do. Is, is there somebody on the line here, Ronnie? Not ready yet. I'll let you know. Oh, okay. They're getting we'll the information. Great. Well, see what happened? You put a tweet out. They're coming in now, one after the other. Well, the, the you know, you talk about Arsenal, and you're going to get people participating. That's just That's awesome. Works. That's awesome. Well, you know what I love about it, too, is um, it makes you realize what a global society we've, we've really become. Um, oh, and Cameron's a great guy, actually. I think he goes to UTEP, if I'm correct. Um, but, yeah, he's um, he's a great guy. Follow him on Twitter. You, you know, uh, it's interesting to – because in England, there's, there can be a little bit of a tribal protectionist attitude towards football. You know, England considers themselves the nation that, that started football, mm -hmm. and they really have a pride about it, and, and justifiably so. But it's interesting to see how, how it, it has really become global. I, you know, there are people um, in, in you know, Korea and Vietnam and, and Japan and, and India and uh, Australia, wow. New Zealand that I'm following on Twitter that have come together because of this passion for a football club based in London. You know, I was just thinking about that. You know, if you and I know you like to travel quite a bit, but if you're traveling around the world, you probably, you know, could put out some tweets or whatever and meet people for lunch. Or Absolutely. Dinner, yep. You know, yeah. or coffee or whatever, and maybe even go out for dinner with just people you never met before. But you have the, the only problem with that is then they know me personally, which would ruin any mystique I have about being a likable guy on, on Twitter. You, you know? know, I hate to break it to you. You are a likable <laughs> <laughs> You've been asking the wrong people. I guess. No, come on. You're very likable. You know that. Everybody yeah. thinks you're adorable. Thank you. You know, <laughs> I, you're blushing maybe now. We can go but, out for a drink sometime. <laughs> no, it's it's that self-deprecating thing. Uh, you know, you're, you're you don't come off as a cocky guy at all, full of yourself and everything. You're constantly putting your own self down. You know. <laughs> No. All right, listen, we've got Cameron from College Station. It looks like uh, the word went out there. We got a, uh, a video Skyper. Cameron, you're in with uh, Elliot. What's up? How's it going, Cameron? So is, is it right? Well. Is it UTEP? Is that right? Yeah, it's actually Texas A&M. A&M, sorry, my bad. Sorry. It's all good. It's all good. So yeah, uh, I saw a tweet. I wanted to get in on the, on the Arsenal conversation. Yeah. So, you know, uh, let's see. It's Thursday night, late night. Uh, are you even a little bit sober at this point? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of bored. Everybody's going out later, mm -hmm. so I just decided I would get in on this. Yeah. Well, sorry. Right. What's your lineup for Sunday? Um. Well, given that nobody's, like, fallen in a sinkhole or anything and, <laughs> mm -hmm. or closed their foot in the door or anything, I mean, I'm thinking uh, Gibbs, Vermalen, Kosielny, if he's healthy, Sanya, mm -hmm. Great. Song, uh, Theo, May, the Oxford Javino, it's like I'm I'm on the fence, like not on who I would want. I mean, I would start Chamberlain and then bring Javino on as a sub, mm -hmm. or maybe even start Javino on the right and bring Walcott in as a sub. That's what like, I do, because I mean, truthfully, I think at this point Theo is more of a sub, like more equipped to make an impact as a sub. But what do we do in midfield? That's the problem. I mean, Arteta, Song, and who? Rizicki, Ramsey? Do you try I, something I different? Play, I would play Thomas personally. Yeah, but, I mean, yeah, Ramsey struggled. Have, Arsenal and soccer and everything. I uh, my room. I'm gonna tilt it. Not to be. My room's kind of messy, but <laughs> I've got like Arsenal flags all over my room. I've got scarves. It's like a big deal for people that are watching wow, that, that don't follow a lot of soccer. Scarves are a big deal, and I've been all over to see Arsenal and traveled to watch them play in Germany and then in London this summer. I mean, that's the number one thing I like about Twitter is. I'll tweet something about Arsenal like midday when I'm at work or bored, and I'll get responses from not just like England, uh, from Ghana. There's a guy from Ghana that tweets me, mm -hmm. from Hungary. A lot of great African gooners out there. So it's like there's, I mean, there's people just as bored as me out there tweeting. So you were you were in London this summer, right? Right, right. I was uh, working for Chelsea's youth academy in London. So did you like you know put any nails in in their you know, in their boots or anything like that? <laughs> well, most of them were like 13, 14-year-old kids. Uh, whoops, so I never mind. Kind, of, <laughs> kind of bad about it. Not, not, not too bad, but kind so of So basically first-team Arsenal age is what you're saying? Yeah, basically. I was trying <laughs> to get some guys, you know, some 12-year-old Cameroonian strikers to come over, but they just wouldn't go. 
did it uh did it give you sort of a different like appreciation of how the sport is over there versus over here they're, they have they're a lot more hard i guess is the word they're more intense because here i mean i play on like city league intramural types teams and if it's like drizzling outside they pack up shop we don't play in the rain that's just how it is like you don't play in the rain that's there when it's like a monsoon they're like go let's do it let's get out and play it's a whole different mentality i guess yeah well and and you know they're professionals by those ages whereas here you know you're not a professional till you graduate college right yeah. right uh, all right so what's your prediction for sunday my head says we'll lose 3-1 mm-hmm. my heart says we might draw 2-2 i mean at best because they're i mean i hate tottenham more than most people hate anything, but I mean, they're phenomenal this year. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, I, I'm going to say 4 0 to the Arsenal out of by Orsen off. How about that? I, I would, You're calling I would an Arsenal a victory? Party. I have to. <laughs> I would throw a party if that happened. And everybody I know would be invited except for the Spurs supporter that I work with. He would not be invited. Well, how about the, here? Here's a question: When do you watch the games? Uh, you go to a bar. What do you do when you watch them usually? Um, sometimes I go to a bar if I have enough money to pay for the drinks. Because <laughs> this season, when I do go, I usually end up being drunk by like ten o'clock in the morning, which isn't necessarily Perfect. a great way to go throughout <laughs> your day. But um, I usually just watch them at home because my roommate, who was a Liverpool supporter, I've converted him over because they're racist. Right? Yeah, that's a big thing. Right? For those who don't know, there's a big guy. Uh, racism scandal with Liverpool right now. One of their players was found guilty of racially abusing another player, uh, and then uh, they tried to defend it. So now Liverpool, which is owned by a, a famous American sports owner, John W. Henry, who owns uh, Boston, Boston Red Sox. Red Sox right? yeah. um, you know, they've, it was really a black mark on their club, no pun intended. So, no pun intended. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, you know, it's funny, and Cameron, I'm sure you know this, a lot of English gooners and football fans in general have a little bit of a, uh, holier than thou attitude. Not all of them, but some of them about the fact that they go to the games or they're over there. They don't really understand some of the dedication and commitment it takes over here to follow the team and for Gunners who aren't in England. That's I, I do get it come across that every once in a while. I mean, there's some great guys. Um, when I was there, I, I it was the last game in the season against Fulham, and I had gotten to London two days earlier, so I was really jet lagged. But uh, some guys, I I put out a tweet. And some guys contacted me. He's like, well, I've got a spare ticket if you want to come. And I went and we spent the day. We made like a big day out of it. They took me to the match. And then they like took me around to the bars and bought me drinks and stuff. And they were like the opposite of those kind of guys. But you do come across the guys that are like, well, if you don't go to the games, then you don't have a, you can't have an input. And I, I, I think more like there is equivalent of that here, but not necessarily the same. It's changing, definitely. Right. Yeah, I agree. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, you know, when we uh, break this trophy drought, you name the place, and I'll meet you for a party. <laughs> uh, it'll awesome. be a, it'll be a nationwide party. I'm gonna rent out every bar in the nation, and we're gonna have a gigantic party because it'll be awesome. It'll be amazing. But yeah, um, it's good to finally talk to you, man. It's and uh, put a face with the Twitter account. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I sat through and I watched the classic movie zone, and so I figured. Wait, to hang in there. That I'm gonna. <laughs> The Thin Man, I sat through The Thin Man, and I was going to get in on this Arsenal conversation. All right. All right. Well, I hope it wasn't too painful for you, oh, Cameron. Oh, no, no, no. I enjoyed every minute of it. It was awesome. Oh, thanks, man. Well, listen, uh, you know, thanks for joining Chillin' with Larry Megan, joining Acorn TV. We hope you come back. And uh, I'm just blown away by, uh, you know, this passion for the Arsenal. Now, I kind of want to start watching, to be honest. But, uh, yeah, you got to do welcome. it. You're more I, than I welcome. noticed that while, while Cameron's on the phone, you know, every time you see that little thing pop up, that's people trying to get in. Yeah. So we got a bunch of callers trying to get in. So I'm going to move it on, Cameron. But thanks so much for joining the show. Okay. Can I give a quick plug for my Twitter? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, definitely. At AFC underscore Cameron. At AFC underscore Cameron. And if you want to tweet me, and uh, that's fine. If you're a lady, I'm single. Okay. Hey, I, so, I, I'm first in line on that one, Cameron. All right. <laughs> now, all hey, right, and I'm cool. sending a tweet out right now. Thank you for doing this. Uh, I really appreciate you uh, getting getting with us on the air. No problem. Y'all take it easy. All Good right. luck Sunday, man. Thank Up you, Cameron. Arsenal. Thank you. Come on. Wow. All right. So the, you know the thing with our with our Skype account, you know, it when one person takes the line. You know, it's not like a phone system, like a tele system right, that yep. you can put them in a queue. Yeah. They just can't get through. They can't get through. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. But did you see all the things popping up? Yeah, that... we got a great community of guys on here and gals, actually. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can see it on Twitter, all the people jumping in and, and talking to us. So it's, and the nice thing about doing that, and I appreciate you doing that for me, because uh, these are guys and gals that I talk to every day. Well, you've mentioned your Twitter. passion to me at least a couple times in the in the green room. We didn't yeah. get this deep into well, it. Well, I'll give you an but example. But I knew it was a passion for you, and I wasn't going to let you get out of here. I'm on I? the air from 1 a.m. to 2 a.m. on Shop NBC Saturday night, so I'll get home at around 2.15 a.m. I'll be, be asleep up. around 2.45. You better believe I'll be in front of that TV at 7.25 Central Time you know, to watch Arsenal. When it's something you want to do, we can pop up like that. Yep. But if we have to go to work and you uh, know, no, then you, then you call and say, <laughs> yeah, forget it. Yeah. I know, I know, it's unbelievable. Yeah. But I did want to get a Skype video, so that was kind of cool. Yeah, if anybody thanks, else wants to Skype in, you know, listen, I'll tie him to the chair here, okay? <laughs> he ain't getting away. You can't get out of the seat. <laughs> uh, waitress. <laughs> Barkeep. <laughs> Cocktails? Okay. <laughs> Take my keys. Anyway, no, but all of a sudden a, a light switch went on. I wasn't going to let you get out of here without talking about the Arsenal. That's No, for I sure. appreciate that. Well, and you know, I mean, it's it's funny. Look, I you know, I have a lot of interest, but, you know, something about Arsenal, it just, it's once it's in your blood. And that happened when you were working at QVC London. It started, uh, well, when I very first lived in Paris in college. Um, okay. You know, they were big football fans, and there are a lot of French players and French manager at Arsenal. Okay. Um, and it was just starting then. Arsene Wenger had just gone there. Um, so there was a lot of talk about that. And I kind of paid attention to it. And they were very successful that season. Um, and so I kind of started to get interested in it. Um, and, you know, there was a World Cup right around that time. So, you know, that made me more aware of it. And then when I started working France in... France goes crazy for their team in the World Cup. Absolutely. Well, and they won it, I, I think it was, what, 2000 when they mm -hmm. won, won it. And they were European champions with Thierry Henry, who was the, the great player for Arsenal. And then... Uh, when I started working in uh, at QVC UK, I just absolutely fell fell in love. All right, Elliot. Here's another one of your fans. We've got Lewis I from say fans. One of my uh, okay. <laughs> one of your uh, one of your. Uh, He's from San Diego, if I remember correctly. Right, but this is what you call your uh, posse or whatever. <laughs> right. Lewis from San Diego, you're on the line. Here. Luis, right? Yes, it's Luis. Actually, all right. Good Luis, to talk to you, man. <laughs> welcome to the show. Good to talk to you too, Elliot. Um, we've been. Twitter buddies for a while now. Yeah. So it's good to finally put a voice, um, other than the voice on the butterfly horse video. Of course. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, um, yeah, it's good to talk to you too. You know, it's funny. I mean, uh, just like with Cameron, I mean, I know we're all kind of like buds, you know, on Twitter and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, one day, obviously we always talk about getting together, but this is, uh, this is a cool way to, to kind of meet up. Yeah. I mean, geographically, you know, it's a bit hard sometimes, but, uh, you know, when you're in San Diego, you have a you have a place to uh, hang out at. Any excuse um, to leave Minnesota for San Diego, Luis? I'm I'm on it. <laughs> absolutely, I think there's a QVC station out here somewhere. I don't know. Something. You I'm should sure. do some research. Just yeah, tell something to someone. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to highlight um, one thing. Um, you kind of touched on uh, stateside Gooners mm -hmm. and how um, you know it's a little bit easier for us to watch games on TV than perhaps someone living in the UK where the TV deals aren't as great, you yeah. know, um, and how that's kind of in the past, I want to say six or seven years changed the way um, supporters watch the game. And now it's to the point where there's um, entire groups and communities. Um, Arsenal, for example, um, created Arsenal America yep. uh, to support, uh, supporters groups. Um, we have an official supporters branch here in San Diego, as you know, and um, most of the major cities in the U.S. do. Um, I think last time I counted, there was about 17 official branches of Arsenal America. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I think that's right. And, yeah, and so I think that that's like one thing that um, makes me very proud to be a Gooner is that um, we have such a strong supporters community and. Uh, I can't think of any other sport that would really inspire that. I know uh, there's a big uh, NFL following in the UK. I follow a lot of friends on, on Twitter that, you know, they love the NFL, they love basketball, but I've never experienced anything like that where, you know, we make entire groups and we're official through the club and everything. And it's just, um, I want just everyone to know that, 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 you know, we stateside Gooners are just as passionate and we do yeah. just as much as anyone living in the UK and the vicinity to support the club. Well, and you know this, Luis. I mean, the, the big criticism, the sort of insult that's levied uh, at 
some fans that aren't the ones in the stadium is to say that they're plastic, you know, to say that mm-hmm. they're not real yeah. fans. And I think, you know, not everyone can afford to get on a plane and fly. Just because you were lucky enough yeah. to be born in North London doesn't make you yeah. any more dedicated. But I think the one thing that we're seeing, Luis, too, is let's face it, Arsenal need the resources to be able to compete with the likes of Man City and Chelsea. And the growth of Arsenal Football right. Club in the United States and the money we spend on merchandise and the money we spend on supporting the club is going to be a huge part right. of the revenue that they're going to need for these commercial contracts and to stay competitive. Right. And um, I think that the, the vision of you know many at the club was that with Stan Kroenke, you know, owner of the Rams and Nuggets mm-hmm. and many other teams, um, buying the majority of shareholdings in the team, that that was going to bring a lot more of the commercial uh, deals and a lot uh, more revenue in the, in, from that, those streams. But um, so far, uh, disappointingly, it has not. And when you compare our commercial deals, for example, to Liverpool's, to the colossal deals that Man United line up, um, mm-hmm. it's disappointing. But it's also an area for growth. And it's something that I think we can improve on in the years to come. Yeah, but not if the results on the pitch start to slip and we fall out of Champions League. I mean, I, I still think it can be improved on, but the product on the on the pitch has to warrant the bigger commercial contracts. And, you know, this would be a very bad time going into the next few critical years before our commercial contracts are up for renewal to, to lose Champions League football to lose Arsene Wenger, to lose players like Robin Van Persie and Cesc Fabregas. You know, and, and to me, you know, we talked about this on the Ars to Mouse podcast uh, just the other day. The question is, are we underperforming or are we just under-talented? And I definitely think we may not have the talent to compete for the title, but even with the talent we have, we're underperforming at this point. Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, we talked about this a little bit last night with a few Chelsea uh, guys, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they're underperforming too. And that, and that, uh, that last Champions League squad spot, which actually doesn't guarantee Champions League football, you have mm-hmm. to play a qualifier. Um, it is going to be really down to the team that plays less horribly down the stretch, and it's it's sad to say that we're right in the thick of a suck off, you know. Yeah. And, but, <laughs> that usually uh, means something uh, different on the internet. Yeah, but. <laughs> that's really. Yeah, I'm glad we're not typing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's really going to come down to that, and um, as you say, the results of the pitch are going to um, really um, dictate where where commercially we go. But I'd like to point to um, maybe perhaps Liverpool's situation to where um, they just lined up. I think they something, it was something like tripled or quadrupled their uh, shirt income or their shirt deal, mm-hmm. uh, despite being in the position that they're in. Right. You know, it, I think it's like two years out of Champions League football, and uh, they haven't won the title in about 20 years. Um, so, I mean, I think I, while – it is true that results on the pitch will have a large say in how those deals go. Um, I still think it's possible um, for us to, to line rent revenue up like that. Yeah. And I'm interested to see what the approach of the club is going to be in the summer. And a couple of people have said, you know, it's time for Arsene to go. And it's, it's going to be a rebuilding year. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if they go into full panic mode and just go out and spend the $100 million they're talking about never happened transfer. no never yeah. happened that's that's pr spin you know all the way my my attitude is top four arson stays out of the top four we'll go into full rebuilding um hopefully it'll be the former uh real quick what uh what do you think for sunday what's your prediction wow predictions <laughs> <laughs> um heart and head i'm uh together those two never meet so, i agree <laughs> uh, but uh i'm gonna say in my head um Two one Tottenham, yeah. in my heart three uh, nil, we smash them. Uh, Adebayor trips on the way down to the tunnel and breaks his face. I'd be perfectly uh, happy with that outcome. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, 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 it's gonna be crazy. And and this, the the thing I'm looking at this game is the first ten minutes. Yep. If the first ten minutes we can come out confidently and play like we're playing at home. Um, I think we have a good chance if in the first 10 minutes they're getting in behind Bale is, is, is ripping 
uh, saying a new one, then I think we're going to have uh, a long. It's going to be a long game. Well, it's it's going to be what five twenty five a.m. for you, I think. So. Uh... Uh, yeah, yeah, five o'clock. But you know, we'll still have a, a good group there at the pub. You know, we that's where we meet every 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 match. That's awesome, man. Well, I'll uh, I'll see you on Twitter bright and early on Sunday, right? Right on. I'll be there. Luis, it's great to talk to you, man. Great to talk to you too. Give a shout out to my handle if you can. Yeah, yeah. S- actually, let me do D- that Goon. right now. Um, I it's S. Is it just S D Gooner? Is that right? S D Goon. I shortened it. Okay, yeah, so it's SD as in San Diego, Goon, G-O-O-N, yeah. SD Goon. So that's uh, how to follow yeah. Luis on Twitter, and he's a great follow. Follow him already. And once again, Elliot, you are Yankee Gunner. Yankee Gunner. Yankee, Yankee Gunner. Gunner. Yankee like the uh, baseball Yankee. team. Yeah, and Gunner like Arsenal is the Gunners. So okay. Yankee Gunner, yep. Fantastic. Well, um, Luis, thank you so much for joining the show. Thank you. Thanks for All having right. me on. Absolutely. Okay, great, great. Yeah. Uh, That's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, it's great to talk to these guys. I mean, and you can hear the knowledge, the passion. He made a great point, too. They're going to be in the pub at 525 in the morning on Sunday watching the team. So, you know, that's that's, that's awesome. Kind of, yeah. I mean, who needs an excuse to be at a pub with your friends? But, you know, 525, yeah, 525 on a Sunday in the morning. morning. I want, yep. you know, <laughs> ba- not bangers and mash. I want, you know, corned beef, hash, and eggs. <laughs> yeah, well, I, yeah, well, anyway, I was going to take that another direction. I'm just going to okay. leave it on the table. <laughs> You always go right in the, right for the you know the gutter. That's what I do. I know, <laughs> I know. But that was cool, man. Uh, I don't know if we're going to take any more calls. If if somebody's on the line now, we'll take it. But listen, I want to um, thank uh, Station Mallory sitting out there, you know, handling these calls and everything. Our producer and associate producer. Um, they randomly selected a winner. We do have a winner now for the free tickets. So I want to announce that now. I've seen this name before. I think he won something, you know, six, seven weeks ago. But Kevin Galuli, I know you, Kevin. I know I know you because I've seen your name maybe on my Facebook page or whatever. But Kevin Galuli from Woonsocket, Rhode Island, we're going to send you the tickets. So uh, thank you, Stasia and Mallory, for picking the name. It was done at random. No time for, you know, fancy uh, gymnastics on this one. but. <laughs> Kevin Galuli from Woonsocket, Rhode Island. Send us an email with your uh, proper address, and, and we'll get those tickets, those movie tickets out to you. So congratulations, Kevin. All right. So that was pretty cool. That was awesome. Yeah. You know, I mean, I have a feeling that if you really wanted to, you could do an all-night thing with just one caller after another after another. And no course, question. You don't need to sleep anyway. I mean, no, we should. You know, <laughs> we need to do that. We need to get Acorn TV to get to get an Arsenal uh, call in slash video Skype in show. Yeah, a once show. a week we can do that. Well, I don't know about once a week. All right, once a month. How about that? But we can work something out. I would. I, if you if you want. You to do like that, my setup here? Uh, this is great studio, great setup. Yeah. If if I'm telling you, those, Thank you. that show will be a I'll must, tell you what, must now, see. A lot of TV. people who have come in here have said, "Wow, I'm impressed," and they see all the electronics and everything. But for Elliot Smith to say he likes it, and he's impressed. That means something. And believe me, I know I'm quality saying, when I see it. I'm saying, I mean, this man is. A, we didn't. We didn't really get into your electronics <laughs> aspect, and I really didn't want to. No, nah, it's boring. Stuff. No, because the thing is, like, people always want me to talk about watches. I don't. I'm a little tired of talking. You do for a living. <laughs> you know. We're here to have fun. Exactly. Yeah, so exactly. I'm kind of glad we didn't really go the no, whole. This was great. Thanks yeah. For having me. Yeah, absolutely. Now, am I actually seeing we have one more caller that wants to get in? Find out who it is, and you know, if it's for me, well, we'll get him next time. But if it's for Elliot, we'll squeak one more out of out of this guy over here. So uh, it's probably for him. But let's see, let's see, we'll find out who it is. And you know, Elliot, while we're um, doing that, um, we had a, a couple of pictures. Uh, I think you've got a couple I've of. I've got some photos. Yeah. Some not, photos not, I not not a lot. Not a lot, but. We'll get that caller online, but tell us what we're looking at here, would you? Uh, pets. Yeah, so that's my dog, Berkeley. 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 Like as in Berkeley, California? Like that, yeah. He is a But you went to law school mutt. in New York. Yeah, no, it was just a name that sounded sounded good. There's absolutely no uh, no logic behind the name because Berkeley. Because Berkeley, they're not meat eaters up the there. They're at all the time vegetarians. The wanted to they're... name Berkeley wanted to name him after David Beckham, and that was out of the question uh, for a variety of reasons. So it's uh, who we went with uh, Berkeley instead. So that's the dog. There are also two cats in the family, as well. So there's uh, we have we have each each animal gets their own little space here. So we have uh, Taz. That's Taz. I wouldn't see you as kind of like this pet guy. Uh, to be honest with you, I've acquired the pets through relationships. So the cats came from one relationship, and the dog came from another. So the, the girls are gone, ended. but you keep the, the pets. Re- that's right. The relationships <laughs> ended, but the relationships with the pets endure. So. 
Yeah, it's charming. And then Tigger is um he's the the other cat. The cats are brothers. Um, the dog came last, so he he disrupted the family. So this one here, that's th Taz. That was Taz, the white the white and gray one we saw there. And then this is Tigger. And you asked about guitars. That's a Les Paul, sort of a, a sunburst Les Paul in the background okay. there. Okay. You know our our girl Barbara was seeing the jazz singer. She sang with Les Paul. Did she? Yeah. I did not. Yeah. <laughs> so this one here is Tigger. That's Tigger. So now you got the, that mean looking dog and these cats. I mean, do they actually? They like, love each other, and he's not mean at all. He's a sweetheart. But he looks like he could tear you apart. Yeah, he couldn't tear you apart. Okay. He's a pit bull. What could he do? All right, so they all uh, get along. He's okay. the sweetest pit bull you've ever seen in your life. Okay, and then, Ronnie, we had one other picture. It looks like you're at the Coliseum here. Uh, the, that's actually my house before the renovation. I don't so, think so. No, that's okay. in Rome. That, yeah, friend. that's in Rome. Yeah. That's Rome. Everything is 2,000 years old in Rome. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, yeah, and... Uh, when was this taken? This was taken... Uh, On your honeymoon. <laughs> Now that you mention it, that is, in fact, when it was taken. Well, I went to Rome on my honeymoon. Well, My yeah. first one, 1978. They didn't tell you what happens after the honeymoon, though. It's downhill. The lawyers get involved. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. You know, a bunch of ruins over yeah. there. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well played. No, but that now the funny thing is I was young, and mm -hmm. so I, to me it was like everything was 2,000 years old. It was a bunch of ruins. I didn't had no interest, but now mm -hmm. I would appreciate it so I, 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 lo I loved going to Italy. I was in Greece also, which was awesome. Meccano, Santorini. Yeah. Uh, Santorini. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yep. You took the mule ride up to the top. Mm -hmm. Did you? Uh, uh, well, we, we, we stayed all, there. We so all do. I didn't do. have to ride the mule, thankfully. All right, cool. Well, it uh, looks like we have Jake from Chicago. Great. He wants to talk to you. So, you know, let's let's keep it, uh, you know, in a timely fashion because I know Elliot's got places still to go. Nah, so. you know. I mean, All right. Here, Jake. we're talking Arsenal. I can do All that. All right. Well, see, that's the one exception. I knew I got you hooked. All right, Jake, you're on the line. Hey, Elliot. How are you? Good. How's it going, Jake? Fantastic. Great to, great to meet you and on, on Acorn TV. Yeah, you too. Uh, just so we're following you on Twitter. Yeah, just so um, I I know what uh, what's the Twitter handle? Let's get that out there. Um, E R J underscore A S C. Okay, great. So uh, yeah, are you uh, are you nervous for Sunday? Uh, well, yeah, a little bit because I'm I'm kind of prepared to, you know, handle a loss against uh, the Spuds. Yeah, yeah, I I, yeah. I can't bear it. I, so when you uh, when you watch, do you watch at home? Or you go to the, you go to the bar. Uh, I go to the bar with my friends. Okay. Uh, is a group of Gooners in general or just uh, football well, fans? A group of uh, football-watching people, not mm -hmm. not exactly Gooners. I couldn't find a lot of Gooners supporters. I'm going to be uh, in Chicago uh, in March during one of the matches. Let's see which match great, it's going to be. So great. We'll, we'll definitely have to get together for one, but it's in uh, it's over St. Patrick's Day, so I think we, we play. Fantastic. We have all the more reason to get drunk. Uh, you know what? We may have uh, – that might be an international week, so we may just have to get together and get drunk uh, without Arsenal. But So what, what bar do you guys go to? Um, there's, there's, a, there's a bar downtown called uh, Waldo's. Mm -hmm. Is it a soccer bar and, generally, football bar? Yeah, sometimes they, we, we convince the uh, bartender to put on Fox Soccer, so yeah. That's great. So how did you get, uh, get involved with Arsenal? Uh, well, I started following Arsenal. I'm, 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 I'm a relatively recent supporter, actually. I started following Arsenal when we were making waves in the uh, Champions League 2006. Okay. okay, so the the final year when we when we faced Barcelona. Exactly. Okay. Yes, and um, I, I kind of feel it's my fault because it was after downhill that, from there. Really... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what did you do? You're not allowed back. I know. I kind of jinxed them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I mean, well, I, I wanted to ask you a question yeah, sure. about um, where you stood on the uh, Osmanov takeover thing that yeah. the uh, shares. So j just so people know, Arsenal was recently bought out uh, by an American, Stan Kroenke, who owns some uh, sports franchises here in the United States, and the other uh, large shareholder is Alisher Usmanov, who is an Uzbeki billionaire, and uh, there's strong. Uh, polarization among the supporters about who would be better for the club. I can tell you, uh, Jake, that I don't want to see Uzmanov control the club. I'm not sure I trust mm -hmm. him. He's on record as having said, I believe, having said he's a United supporter. Um, he yeah. has sort of a suspect background in terms of where his resources come from now. Some would say that any billionaire has had to do some dirty things to get where they are. Um, I don't yeah. think Kroenke is great for the club. My desire not to see Uzmanov take over has nothing to do with my yeah. support for Kroenke. It's just I don't necessarily like the uh, 
billionaire sugar daddy ownership model yeah. in general. I think it's so, great for you... a period of time. That's how you wind up like a Leeds United struggling to get back mm -hmm. into the premiership. So for me, no, I, I don't want to see Usmanov come in, but that doesn't mean that I'm behind Stan Kroenke particularly. Yep. Yeah. Would you advocate a place on the board for Usmanov? I, it, I mean, whether I'd advocate it or not, uh, the two are, you know, diametrically opposed so i it's not going to happen right i mean i i find it very hard to believe that they could work together i could see Kronky taking a quick buck with the the way the shares have appreciated in value so quickly especially now that uzmanov got the rangers shares so i could see mm -hmm. this becoming a, a, a formality ultimately but you know the, the truth yeah. is i think a lot of supporters get so caught up in the financial side and the ownership aspect when the, in my opinion there's enough talent at the club right now to be performing better than we are. And I think all of that issue yeah. of ownership and, and finances obscures the more important point. Why aren't the players we have performing? This is a club that was within touching distance of a title last season with a few months to go. And from that point to this point, the decline has been precipitous. Now, I know we lost Sesk. I know we lost Nazri. But we had yeah. a terrible end of last season, almost inexplicably, an awful summer, and now the worst season under Wenger. So I think resources aside, there has to be some explanation as to why the players we yeah. do have are so badly underperforming. Mm -hmm. what, well, where I stand is, I thought since Sesk left and Nazri left mm -hmm. uh, last summer, well, we first of all did not replace them properly. So True. We need the cash to replace them, and we need cash to bring in more people. Because with Sask and Nazri, we didn't do all too well in the league last season, did we? Well, I mean, we, we were there. We were there to the end, and then we, we exactly. faded badly. So, you know, I, I think the other point is people point to, you know, with Sesk we only got so far. But we had Sesk during his development. We need to be bringing in mm -hmm. players who are of Sesk's quality, not when they're 16, but when they're in their peak. To me, Jake, it's exactly. not down to transfer fees. It's down to our wage structure. If we do have fifty million, seventy million, a hundred million, whatever it is, a big portion yeah. of that needs to go towards, you know, cutting the dead weight in the middle of our wage system, mm -hmm. and and paying people like Jack Wilshire, like Van Persie, like Vermaelen to stay because paying Robin Van Persie a hundred thousand pounds a week isn't going to keep him. It's that simple. Well, like Diaby, for example, we we pay him a lot, and he also mm -hmm. occupies a place in the twenty five man squad. Yeah. Well, what about? I mean. What about guys like uh, Carlos Vela, Nicholas Bentner, guys who I'm sure we're paying part of their wages, Danielson, exactly. guys we can't cut loose. Manuel Almunia is on, what, 60,000 pounds a week, or is it 40,000? You know, um, uh, yeah. Juru just got a new two-year extension at 50,000 pounds a week. So I think a lot of that dead weight can be cut out, and we need to put the resources yeah. towards paying at the top end. But, you know, Arsene Wenger, as a philosophy, he doesn't like a big discrepancy in wages within yeah. the club because he thinks that creates – hard feelings among the players, but I, I think it's just, that's not a reasonable expectation anymore. Yes. I actually defer with you on the uh, Juru point. Uh, Juru, I, I feel, is a very capable fourth-choice center back, considering he has five years of Premier League experience. And I agree. And if we had to buy a light player, it, he would cost in excess of five or six million. You know, I, you know to, to be fair, I think Juru is, is not a great example. Before his shoulder injury last year, he was very reliable for us, maybe our most reliable defender. You're not going to get a great fourth-choice center back at, at you know, 20,000 pounds a week. So I know, um, yeah. I know we're kind of wrapping up here for the show, but let me just ask you yeah. really quickly, what's your, uh, what's your thought for Sunday? What's your expectation? Well, I hope we get a win, a uh, 2-1, mm -hmm. but um, I'm, I'm kind of – leaning toward a one-all draw with Van Persie with the goal. I'd bite your hand off for it. I hate to say it, but I'd take it. So, uh, yeah. you know, enjoy it. Have fun at the pub. And uh, when I make it out for uh, St. Patrick's Day, I'll send a tweet out, and we'll have to get some Chicago Gooners together. At Waldo's. For sure. Yeah. Can I have a final plug for my Twitter? Yeah, yeah, one more time. What's that Twitter account? And I'll send out a tweet for it, too. PRJake underscore AFC. PRJake underscore AFC. Thank you. I'll send it out now. Thanks, Jake. Great to talk to you, man. Fantastic talking to you as well. Have Thanks, Jake. Thank you. Wow, man, this is impressive. Yeah, it's fun, right? Yeah, worldwide. Yeah, all over. And and you know, it's great to talk nice. to, you know, uh, you know, American Gooners because I think that it, we call them Gooners. Right? Yeah, Gunners, Gooners. But uh, just because I think you see the the passion, and uh, I think there's a lot of people back in, in England that may not realize just how passionate and committed we are to That's pretty awesome. To the club, you know? That's pretty awesome. 
Well, all right, Elliot, you know, we end every show. Uh, you know, you probably saw when you came in. I know you got here kind of at the last minute. But yeah. You might have noticed above my fireplace there. You know, Judy Garland. Judy, Judy Garland, yeah, I saw that. I, I, I walked into the apartment and said, this is the nicest woman's apartment I've ever been <laughs> <laughs> You sound like my second ex-wife. but just, Second ex-wife. <laughs> you're one ahead of me then. No, nah, she would always say to me, Larry, you're not a chick, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I would say, why? Because, you know, because I wear makeup and take two hours to get ready. That could be one of the reasons. She says, no, because you carry a purse. But no, I'm joking around. You know. He's not joking around. No, you don't know Lori. I mean, my ex-wife, she was a hardcore, sarcastic New Yorker. Yeah, okay. I know what that's like a little bit. <laughs> okay. You ever been with a, a New York, I mean, that real insult street sarcasm? I resemble that remark, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's what I had for okay. 17 years, mm -hmm. but I loved it because she always cracked me up. But So it was all in good fun. But, cool. um, you know, listen, straight guys can dig Judy, too, you know? And Whatever you say, <laughs> I'm just the, a guest here. No, and the thing of it is, is that um, I always got to end every show. We got to get a little bit of Judy Garland in there. So, Bonnie, we're going to go to it now. Always chasing rainbows. Oh man, I knew this guy was going to get me. Um, all right, listen, you know, tonight uh, we spent a good portion of the show on the Oscars, of course, and we did a little bit of the classic film zone. And, you know, in honor of the uh, Oscars, which is this Sunday, I thought I would show something from um, uh, Judy's moment, really, in um, A Star is Born, 1954. She was nominated for the Oscar. Everybody expected her to win it. She did not win it. She came in second, but, uh, or, you know, you, they don't say who comes in second, but... Uh, Part of the reason she probably didn't win it is they edited it out. They deleted a few scenes out of the movie, and that probably cost her. But nevertheless, it certainly was a high point in her career, making a comeback after all her MGM years in 1954 with a movie that was produced by her husband, Sid Luft, A Star is Born. And I think the uh, signature moment in that film has to be the man that got away. And so we're going to take a quick look at that as we uh, wrap up the show. Good 
riddance. Goodbye, every trick of his. You're on to, but fools will be fools. And where's he gone to? The road gets rougher. It's lonelier and tougher with hope you burn up. Tomorrow he will turn up. There's just no let up. The live long night and day. Ever since this world began, there is nothing sad there. Oh, one man, woman, looking for the man that got. Well, there you have it, Elliot. The end of a uh, really a great episode of Chilling with Larry Megan. Uh, any final thoughts? Any final words from you tonight? Uh, I mean, I'm so glad we got a chance to do it. I, I had a lot of fun. Thank you for having me here. Um, just having a chance to talk about Arsenal. What a great. I mean, I know there are some people who probably are bored to tears hearing about it, but I, uh, it's good to be I, exposed to different things. I and, didn't know what you were talking about, but I was enjoying seeing your passion. Really. Well, that, that's what it's all all about. Is just I think when you talk to somebody who's got a passion for something that you don't know a lot about i think it's it's great i mean your passion for classic films and judy garland mm -hmm. um it was fun to hear the the, the story of the, the i mean thin Ju man. judy's my favorite but mm -hmm. i mean it's also ella fitzgerald and frank sinatra yeah. and Nat king cole and peggy lee and great, Gene kelly great. and Terry grant you know it's not just judy it's well just... let's let's do it again and uh okay you know anytime you want to start the first uh u.s based arsenal Internet show. A webcast. I'm, I'm your man. Yeah, okay. webcast, yeah. Acorn TV. It's yeah. another another one for the drawing board. Well, that's going to wrap up a show tonight. Um, what a special thank you to uh, my friend Candace out in Los Angeles. Uh, great job on the Oscars. Of course, Barbara in New York. We're going to chat tomorrow, or actually later today. It's past the midnight hour now. And uh, I want to thank everybody for uh, tuning in tonight. Elliot, thanks for coming in. And, you know... Um, the whole thing, always chasing rainbows, is all about never give up. You know, always keep pursuing your goals, chasing those dreams, uh, just like I am. Uh, keep pursuing those rainbows. Until next week, I'm Larry Megan. Peace, love, and all good things. Chill, chill, chill. With Larry Megan. Larry Megan.